Hello and welcome to The Flicksters, the place where two movie geeks bring you all the movie reviews and TV news you can ever want in your lifetime. That's correct, the big screen and the small screen. You can download our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, CastBox and Anchor. And do not forget to follow us. We are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. We will see you there. Uh, Devout, I noticed you didn't do the whole uh, Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, you see, I'm, uh, my American accent's quite bad. I've practiced it over the past couple of, <laughs> over the past week. Oh, really? So, Why is uh, that? Because I've, I've had a few American conversations. Really? <laughs> yes, a few American conversations with American people or person. In, enlighten me about the American psyche. So, as we know, this is a very uh, multinational uh, place, London. Yes. And people from all over the world come to London. Of course. Exactly. So I have contacts all over the world, as we know, because I'm an international person. Of course you are. International man of mystery. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And a friend from America is here in London. Oh, wow. So I've I've managed to, you know, speak to that person for the past few days and I've Americanized my language, which uh, sometimes I do want to show. But I think through listening to that person speak... I've realised my American accent is actually quite shit. So I didn't want to carry on doing an American accent. A quick question. Tell me, did you do your John Gotti impression? John Gotti? No. No. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you have got a few minutes, download last week's episode. So we, we speak about John Gotti, the John Travolta film, right? Yeah, yeah. And Duval, he went into his John Gotti mode. Oh, John Gotti. Oh, John. It's hilarious. <laughs> New York, you know. But <laughs> not today, man. <laughs> it's silly. It's silly. Oh, okay. All right. But, uh, um, so we've got a few shout outs today. We, we have. We with? have. But before we do that, mm. let's just say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flicksters. Thank you for downloading it. Sit back and enjoy it. If you've got anything that you want to share with us, please do get in touch. And here it is. Okay, give us the shout outs. We have got a few shout outs uh, today, actually. As you know, the, the show gets broadcast all over the world Obviously. to many people. Yeah. And we get some feedback, which we like to, uh, you know, we like to give back to the people who, yeah. who gave us uh, f- praise and feedback on Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. And first one goes out to Kay. Yeah, definitely. Otherwise known as Good Salonius, who. Uh, He's a bit of a nutter, as Crazy. we know. People don't know this, but he's a nutter. And uh, I think we posted, uh, we posted something a few uh, days ago on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> it was to do with the Joker, wasn't it? It was to do with the Joker, yeah. The, the, the uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker's, you know, being filmed. And uh, we posted a picture of Joaquin Phoenix in, in, in character. He wasn't happy with that. No. He wanted to see Zazie Beats. In our posts, rightly so, and we we messed up. We, we should have we messed up, Zazi. We, we are sorry. We are sorry. We didn't show <laughs> you in the lights you should have been showed. So uh, we will show you Zazi next time. Exactly. 2K, through K, no, through you, through us. Two K. You know what we mean. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna represent. Yeah, but big uh, shout out to K though. Big shout out to K, and then uh, Dominator Fitness, uh, a new uh, follower of our podcast. Whoa. Dominator Fitness is. A man from, I believe, New Jersey. I think it is uh, from America, and uh, he's he's ripped. He's like he loves Marvel. This guy could he, have his own Marvel film. I, I said to him he should be in a Marvel film because he looks like he looks like all the Marvel, like Black Panther. <laughs> he looks like Captain America, all yeah. rolled into one. And, no special effects there. And, and you know what? Also, he's got such a Marvel name, the Dominator. I know, Dominator. Yeah, Dominator Fitness. Oh my God, this guy Come could. On now. <laughs> this could be like you know a Marvel character. He should be. <laughs> and then uh, Corey, next one, uh, homegrown talent here. Uh, Corey turned forty. Yeah, I'll leave it at there. He turned forty. <laughs> he's more than forty, but he t- he turned forty something. But he just uh, sent us a shout out on Flixsters. Oh, okay. Happy uh, birthday, his birthday, Corey. He's always following us. He's always messaging. If he sees a film, he lets us know. So. Yeah. Shout out to Corey. Definitely. And the next one's quite a special one, actually. It it is indeed. (laughs) I would just want to say a big shout out to Estefania, Ah. who is listening, uh, who follows the show and always got something to say, always something positive and always encouragement. So Estefania, gracias. Gracias. See you soon. (laughs) Well, from day one. She's literally our day one. From day one. Yeah. Yeah. So we love our day one. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Next one goes out to Erica. Who is the person I was speaking of? Oh, who's right. come from America? Okay. From uh, Texas. 
Hey y'all. The Lone Star State, Texas, uh, <laughs> Dallas, or he, is it Houston? Houston, Houston I think. She's going to cuss me. She's going to cuss me. Uh, I think it's Houston, Texas. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so she's from, from America. She's here for a while and she loves our show. She loves Transformers, actually. Wicked. So we've got a bit of Transformers in today's show just for her. So uh, don't say, you know, we, we represent our we listeners. We do. We represent we do. our Texans. We do. We do. <laughs> and then the last uh, shout out goes to a, uh, actually a, a contributor to the show. You know. In its most truest form. We got to mention this, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so last week, right? So in episode 18, Deval reviewed Slice and it was this really interesting, crazy mix, uh, you know, of a film horror comedy yeah like you know and it's got some people from stranger things in there and it's got this actress called ray gray ray gray mm. so you know what we just kind of like posted this up on on our instagram page look ladies and gents listen to episode 18 of the show and lo and behold ray gray got in touch with us she did i was shocked i saw the i saw the post and i thought her face looks familiar yeah and then i realized she's the actress from the film yep i was like whoa so I just literally shout shout it out back to her she came back and forth a couple of times saying thank you for the shout out so no thank you thank for you the performance. Ray, Ray. great performance in the film uh, acting acting alongside uh zazi beats there you go again there you go k exactly <laughs> so yeah she's done a great performance she's also been in fear the walking dead yeah and a bunch of other uh, tv shows and films uh in the states and she's one of the up and coming stars I she's think. gonna be so a big star definitely so watch out watch out for ray gray so there's a there's a shout out for the it, week that is wicked man i feel I'm already on high like you know this is a great great start to the show sure all right is. ladies and gentlemen now let's move on to movie news shall we wow and deval mm-hmm. again chock a block man we've got loads of stuff to go through over here so there was a rumor that I kind of like was reading up on about and someone, a little birdie from LA kind of like, oh, yeah. yeah, got in touch and just said, Hey, mm. look, you know what? We want to give you this information. So rumor is it that the black widow film will be set in 1999. Damn. Yeah. What, 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 is, what could that be in 1999? And then when I started kind of digging around, there's kind of, a b- bit more information is that it could be something to do with the millennium bug. Oh, espionage or something to do with you know the system things falling down breaking mm. down because there was a massive fear that this, the whole system would crash and remember? maybe it didn't crash because we had black widow who took care yes, of it exactly that makes sense that makes sense that makes a lot of sense so also i think you're saying that it's going to include some other characters yeah so um we may we may see hawkeye mm. and the winter soldier the cap himself no, no, the Winter Soldier. I think. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, actually, <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Yeah, Winter I think Cap, Soldier. Cap's still on ice in '99. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's he's right. A, he's a capsicle. Yeah, he is the but, Winter Soldier, and this is going to be like bad Winter Soldier. Yeah, because it, it makes a lot of sense, you know. Because think about it. Uh, think, think about a few scenes that you've seen Black Widow in. So in Winter Soldier, she's working closely with Cap, and they're trying to, you know, overthrow Robert Redford's character. Mm. There's a few lines in that film. There's a bit where she's in the, the hospital with Cap and she's by the vending machine. Yep. And she says, oh, uh, back in this this year, I was on an assignment and uh, the Winter Soldier shot through me to get to the person I was protecting. Mm. And Cap says, oh, uh, well, I guess you're going to look bad in bikinis, aren't you? <laughs> and she, you know, because she's like, oh, bad. She's like, oh, bye bye bikinis. He's like, yeah. oh, really? But yeah. uh, <laughs> she mentions that story. And then later on during, later on during the film, when Robert Redford's character is holding them hostage and uh, she's trying to delete all the information from from uh, or Hydra's records or yeah. Shield's records. Yeah. Uh, Robert Redford says to her, oh, uh, if you release all the files, people are going to know about you as well. Do you want them to know about the, the children's ward in, I can't remember the country. Do you want the people to know about this that happened in, in Russia or mm. this? And she's like, she stops and thinks about it. And then she's like, or how about you? Like, are you, are you afraid of what they're going to find out about you? So there's a history that they've sort there of alluded is. to over the past few years. Also, when Hawkeye and uh, Scarlet, when Hawkeye and Black Widow <laughs> are fighting in Avengers 1, when they're fighting the Chitauri, they're like, oh, this reminds me of oh, Bu- Bucharest or, yeah. or Budapest or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like all these little hints that the history, there's so much to show. And it makes sense to have Hawkeye in there, right? Because yeah. they were... They, they were a team. Yeah. They, they yeah. did a lot of the, and the super assassin, yeah. super pa- spies. Yeah. So, I'm really excited about this one because this, yeah. this is going to be anything like Winter Soldier. This is going to be a heavy film. Mm. Heavy film. It will be. It will yeah. be. And just 
going on and following on from Hawkeye could now this is kind of like moving into Hawkeye territory and Avengers 4 territory but could we see the end of Hawkeye and the beginning of someone else a new character a new character now I don't know my Marvel like you do Mm. however there are images out there on the net which indicate that we could say goodbye to Hawkeye and say hello to Ronin Ronin yes Mm. Ronin okay Ronin's a he's a he's almost like the the badass version of Hawkeye so Hawkeye is like the the government version the do as you're told version yeah the you know clean face clean shaven version yeah Ronin is more the 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 more mysterious the more uh rogue version the version that is a bit more badass and right will kill a man rather than capture so yeah, I think Ronan, his 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 outfit's a bit different. Yeah, looks a bit more, you know, slick. Yeah, he a bit does. More right. of, a, of a of a, I guess he's covered up. He's he's covered up a bit more as well. He's got yeah. a bit more, you know, camouflage to him. But uh, I believe that could be a fact. We could we could find Ronan is what we get after Avengers Four yeah. because of certain events. And remember, obviously, he wasn't in Avengers Infinity War. So yeah. and there was this question, right? So where was what was Hawkeye yeah. doing all this time? So I think he was off uh, looking for the Kree. No, no mm. not the Kree, sorry. I think he was off looking for the Skrull mm. in Japan. That's my bet. Because there's been some on, on set uh, photos of him in his Ronin uniform yeah. with uh, like uh, Yakuza type, you know, wow. people. And in the comics, that's what he does. He goes to Japan, there's Skrull yeah. uh, hidden as Yakuza and he's there to try and unearth them. And you know what? It just kind of reminds me of, you know, last week we spoke about Disney having their streaming service and they want to make kind of like these uh, kind of like smaller shows mm. with characters who haven't had a, a film. And I was thinking, wouldn't Hawkeye be a really good one as well? Or, mm. or Ronin? Yeah. But I think maybe they're just having him in this. So yeah. maybe he might not get his own, but we'll see. All right. Okay. So moving on to Disney stuff. Um, what we've got is so Disney to yeah tell us about this one yeah Disney so you know obviously the the whole uh, James Gunn uh, palaver with what he said on the tweets and so mm-hmm. on and he was fired from from Disney aka Marvel and Guardians Three well it turns out that his script was so good that they're still going to use it yeah <laughs> I mean and they own it yeah yeah so yeah exactly it's their property he wrote it for them he's still yeah gonna, he's still going to get paid he's still going to get the credit someone else would direct but obviously if marvel were really 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 like dead against what he'd done they wouldn't why would they use exactly, the script but then they know that his shit brings in the money yeah so they, they can on face value fire him but really his content is too good to miss yeah. so they're going to have that script they're going to lap it up of course of course yeah. and i'm sure it's going to be a great script and i I'm think sure. all the, the the cast and crew they all are on board with all of that as well they and are. So, you could say it's a bit of a kind of uh, compromise. Yeah, exactly. It's the balance that I think is the best way forward uh, at this moment. Because mm. I think uh, as long as they get a good director, he can take that script and run with it. Yeah. Then the film should come up, should come off quite well. It sure. goes to show the power of a good script because people underestimate script writers and they, everyone thinks about the directors and so on. But exactly. directors are important, don't get me wrong. But, you know, you can't, make good food without good ingredients exactly so script the dialogue is it's it's where it all begins doesn't it it's the ingredients of it all brilliant all right okay what else have we got tell us about x-men dark phoenix yes x-men dark phoenix so the trailer dropped uh literally a few days ago Mm. we uh we made that known on our on our social media yeah the trailer looked okay i'm not gonna lie the trailer looked okay but my expectations with anything fox is always going to be low now yeah because of all this shit that's gone on behind the scenes it's been delayed twice Mm. Uh, along with New Mutants. So for me, whatever they get, I'm just going to watch it with low expectations. Sure. So, but the release date is uh, 2019, Valentine's Day. Now, why do you think they picked that? Why? Is anyone else is coming out in, in March? Well, hang on. Uh, Ms. Marvel is That's Captain March, Marvel. But, uh, oh, it's March. Valentine's, yeah. Mm. Uh, so for February 14th. So they don't want to mess around with no. that. They, they're thinking, let's get it out a bit early. Also, I think they're trying to hope for like a Deadpool type situation. Mm. 2016, Deadpool came out in Valentine's Day. Right. Done really, really well. Okay. I think, obviously, it's a very different film. Date movie? Exactly. It could be that kind of, you know, scenario. So I think they're trying to get people and they're, 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 they're marketing Sophie Turner, Jean Grey, aka Phoenix's character. Yeah quite a lot so maybe a lot more women may think oh she's in it 
from Game of Thrones, uh, you know, yeah. Sansa Stark. Let's go and watch it. Yeah. So I think they're trying to use that spin on it. Sure. So mm, see, uh, how, see how it works. Who would have been in a fight? Dark Phoenix or uh, Dark Captain, Phoenix. Captain Marvel? Dark Phoenix. Oh. Dark Phoenix is a next level character. Dark Phoenix could test... Yeah. Could Dark Phoenix could test Thanos with the Infinity Stones. Really? Dark Phoenix is not to be messed so with. So she's an Omega level mutant. She's beyond Omega level. Oh, fucking hell. She's beyond... That's why she's so important because the... Uh, the what they call again the uh, l- l- you know uh, Jessica Chastain's character yeah. I thought she was going to be uh, Lalandra from the Shi'ar Empire but right. they're saying that she might not be right okay but in the comics the uh, Shi'ar Empire the uh, the yeah so different different people were trying to get control over her because mm-hmm. they knew how powerful, powerful she was she, so they yeah. tried to get control of her mind and use her for nefarious purposes and that's what the whole conflict is you know so People know how powerful she is. Yeah. With her, it's better she's on your side than not. They're not on your so, side. So right. yeah, she's crazy powerful. Okay, cool. All right, and tell us about, there's a new film or a new script in the works, uh, Multiple Man. Multiple Man, yeah. This one, just I just heard about this a couple of days ago uh, from one of my sources in LA. And uh, so Multiple Man is a Marvel character who literally does what it says on the tin. Yeah. So he can multiply himself. And, and we've seen Multiple Man before. In X-Men 3. Yeah. In uh, that shit one. Uh, the what, Last in, in the forest. Was it in the forest? X-Men, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah you're good, 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 good brain. Good and and wasn't, wasn't there a, um, now, now tell me if I'm just like, you know, talking well, shit. Michael here. Keaton film. Where he's <laughs> multiplicity or something. Multiplicity, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one as well. But wasn't there a talk of James Franco being multiple man? Yes. Oh, oh. so the, 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 the birds are flying to you too. <laughs> 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 they're getting paid twice for the same information exactly <laughs> so yeah so yeah my, so james franco is uh, has been tipped to play multiple man and and i've got to say he has been attached to this project for mm. a while now because yeah, they yeah. were talking about this a couple of years ago two yeah. three years ago yeah so yeah so basically his power is the ability to multiply himself yeah and think independently yeah while he's multiplied imagine all the action this guy will get gordon bennett can you imagine <laughs> he could he could work a job he can rob a bank he can take his girl to Paris he can <laughs> he can do all sorts of things at the same time yeah but I wonder if, if there's like a joint sensation type thing or, mm. or if they're joined in any way or they're literally individual when they split individual up. characters it's, yeah it's a weird it's like copy and paste isn't it <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah copy and paste copy and, and is paste he, is he do we know like is he anti-hero is he is he a villain or is he can he's he... a bit of a naughty character I mean having those powers I mean the first thing you've got to think of is doing something a bit hey, you know naughty exactly yeah. so it would be interesting to see how the character will turn out, but I think he's more of a good guy than a bad guy. Mm. Depends on what the situation is, yeah, sort of thing. Totally. You know? So, yeah. Okay, cool. Now we've spoken about birds of prey on the, on this show, like you've spoken about it a lot, and we're actually we've got a release date now. So the movie studio got in touch with us and they said, "Hey, look, Flixers, we want to let you guys know that the film's going to get a Feb 2020 release date." Yes, correct. Yeah, so another maybe Valentine's again for that one, perhaps you never Possibly. know. And also, Huntress and Black Canary, they've been cast. Yes, they have. So uh, Huntress will be played by Mary Elizabeth Weinstein. Is that her mm. name? Weinstead. Sorry, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, who was right. in. Uh, she's been in like. Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Yeah. And uh, she was also in uh, Final Destination, one of them. Okay. I think Final yeah, Destination yeah. part three, I think. She was in Fargo, really good in Fargo. Yeah. So they, I mean, there's also word of uh, Janelle Monet being one of the, mm. one of the uh, birds of prey. And we let me mention before the lead actress from one of the Black, Black Mirror episodes. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned that. Uh, so yeah, so they're slowly casting uh, different roles in this. And I think as the, cast is assembled fully and also just remember as well uh, harley quinn's going to be the leader gonna of be, this group yeah, exactly so yeah, margot sorry. robbie's going to be gonna returning be. to do that yeah and also a big shout out scott pilgrim it's one of my it's such an underrated film Trust i love me, that film yeah. and it's got it's got captain america it's in it. got cap it's 2000, got cap in it. 2010 did it come yeah. out or 2009 i think yeah i remember watching that film and i loved it okay right now kingsman now we did you see kingsman 2 yes i did yeah 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 I never saw it. I saw the first one. I liked the first one. And second one, I kind of like, you know, didn't get a chance Mm. to watch. But apparently Kingsman 3 will hit cinemas in November 2019. So we've got like, you know, a a year, year, year and a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be a good film from what I hear. It probably will be the last of that franchise because I think that actor, he's picking up speed now. 
he's doing he's Robin Hood. he's going to be wanted for a lot of things. Like yeah. we mentioned, he may even be Captain Britain. Who knows? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Kingsman 3 should be a good one. Looking forward to it. The, the second one had uh, Oberyn Martell mm. in it. It had uh, Julianne Moore, I believe she was a baddie. Channing Tatum was in it. Yes, he, he was in it. So it was, a, it was an interesting film. Bigger sure. characters and bigger set pieces and so on. So yeah, it was it was quite good. Okay, all right. Now I know you, you love like you know your transformers love it and you love doing uh voices as well so <laughs> tell us about this next piece of news <laughs> so yeah so the new bumble uh well we know there's a new bumble film coming out in december bumble 2018 Bee, right? <laughs> bumble, <laughs> bumble Bee, that's what i meant yeah, yeah. uh i can't read <laughs> <laughs> hashtag bumble <laughs> yeah um yeah sorry go on so there's a new bumblebee coming out in december 2019 i mean 2018 sorry so three months time yeah and uh the first trailer came out a little while ago Mm. and we've just had now had the second trailer which shows a lot more of what's going on right so we know it's going to be a film set in the 80s i think or early 90s yeah and uh it's going to have a female lead she's going to obviously find bumblebee the car's going to be her friend or whatever he still can't talk mm. but this trailer showed us bits of Cybertron yeah and showed us battles in Cybertron with the uh, with the other Autobots and and uh, Decepticons it shows a bit of Optimus Prime in it right uh, it shows my favourite my favourite <laughs> my, <laughs> my favourite favourite Transformer I've got a picture <laughs> of him in my house yep yeah uh, Soundwave <laughs> <laughs> I love Soundwave because it shows him in his truest form because we had Soundwave in the Michael Bay Transformers but he yeah. was he didn't look like Soundwave, Soundwave right. in this one he looks exactly like like he does in the cartoons <laughs> navy blue with silver trimmings also he has the the uh, sort of the dog jump out of his chest right he, he's like, he starts with a tape and he transforms into a dog wow because you know he's he's Soundwave is, is the person that gets your information yeah he'll perch on the corner and be like listening <laughs> He'll get information. He's got a, he's got an eagle that can fly out and be like CCTV or yeah, listen, yeah. find out the location of stuff. Goes back to Soundwave. Soundwave will go to Megatron and say, Megatron, I have found the location of the Energon cubes. <laughs> and he's just like, that's how he talks because it's like an audio tape, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Soundwave doesn't even like need to fight. <laughs> he is the, the future of, of modern warfare. Wow. Because modern warfare, your best weapons are information. Information, and data. He, if he knows it, then you're in the power. So exactly. Soundwave... He's my favourite. Big shout out to Soundwave. So we see Soundwave in this and, one. And so, also, yeah. have, have you noticed this thing now where a lot of films are the 80s? Yeah. Uh, the 80s set films now. It's coming back, man. Slice, the horror comedy that we yeah. reviewed. Stranger Things. Stranger Things, obviously, yeah. All these, like, there's so many, like... Uh, 80s type vibes coming back yeah. and it's just like you know it's good it's, it's brilliant I love mm. it uh, alright so now we've spoken about Jean Favreau before on this show obviously director of uh, Iron, Man. Iron Man Iron Man 2 yep so tell us what is he up to yep so he uh, b- b- there was some speak or some it was rumours at first but it's definitely happening from yeah. a few months ago and now there's a word that his crew is going to start filming the live action Star Wars TV show yeah. from next week. Exactly. And I'm sure this is going to end when it's all done and dusted and everything. This will be on the streaming service, right? Disney's one. For sure. And people will go out that and will get th- subscriptions like crazy. No doubt. No doubt. Like crazy. Yeah. So, and when you think about it, a Star Wars is this massive saga, right? And what better way to show the saga is in a kind of like, you know, a series yeah. where you've got time to delve into characters, yeah. show great action set pieces and just kind of like expand the universe even more. Now, I don't know whether or not this is going to have, like, um, will this have characters that we know? It's meant to be canon. Okay. It's meant to be canon to everything that we've seen, like Force Awakens. And it's Up meant until to, this point. I'm not sure what time, I've got to find out what time uh, in, this, in the sort of the... Uh, the mythology that it's meant to be in, whether it's going to be up to date or whether it's going to be before or in between Jedi or something. So, mm. you know, Star Wars, like they like to play around with the timeline yeah, just to keep things a bit fresh. So sure. but either way, it's going to be canon to whatever Star Wars history uh, currently stands. So yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And another film, you know, from the 80s that I want to kind of quickly mm-hmm. mention, 
Terminator. Have you seen this yeah. picture of Arnie and yeah. Linda Hamilton? Yes. They posted a picture together. Yeah. And you know what? I mean, Arnie, he's, he's in a bit, is he's yeah, in yeah. a beard and like, you know, she looks really, really She's cool. She's got a beard too, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> sorry, Linda. Linda, sorry. <laughs> As we um, know, they do listen to the show, so of, we, better be, of we better be careful now. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it was great because they are going to be back in Terminator 6. I know. So yeah. this isn't so this isn't going to be directed by James Cameron. He's producing yeah. it, but that is a good thing. Once so he's involved, you know his vision. good hands. Trust his me. His vision. Mm. So I don't know anything about the plot just yet. I know so far that it's not gonna it's gonna wipe off <laughs> seriously. Terminator one exists, this Terminator two, two exists. After that they're wiping it. So this is gonna be a continuation from Terminator, from Terminator two. two. And you know what? <laughs> that just shows what James Cameron thought of yeah, those other ones. Like, nah, nah, they, they were nah, shit, nah. basically. It's so confusing. Let's yeah. just wipe that away. Exactly. And they're back. Yeah, so literally he said he'd be back and they'd be back together. Now, here's the thing. Could they do the do a twist and Arnie is now again the villain? Uh, Or no, or it could... Anyone knows, you know, I mean... It, <sighs> mm, you know, that, that'd, be, that'd be disappointing, but... Yeah. I don't think so. I think there's got to be some other villain. Yeah. And also, it's directed by Tim Miller, the Deadpool 1 director. God. That's good. And it's going to be probably funny as well and might have a few laughs in there. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I wonder so. if Edward Furlong is going to kind of like turn up. Oh my up. gosh, can you imagine? Oh my, it's been... Wow. What, 92 that came out, I think, Terminator 2? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah is it right yeah, about 91, 91, 91 oh, I think. Sorry, 91. Yeah. Bloody hell. Damn. It's been a while. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what he's been up to, but, you know, who knows? All right. Okay. Now, Neil Marshall is a film director that I really liked. I remember uh, he directed... Um, Descent. Uh, that film's good, you classic. know. The Descent. I love The Descent. Yeah. He directed Dog Soldiers. I'm yeah. not sure if you remember this one. Yeah. He directed The Battle of the Bastards from mm. uh, Game of Thrones. Do you remember the... Oh, he, oh my gosh. He done that? He Bro, he directed that episode. Battle oh, of the Bastards. It was him. So the Bastard of Bolton. Yeah. Battle of the Bastards. Yeah. That's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Wicked, wicked, wicked yeah. episode. And and this is great news because you you really like Hellboy. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, you like Roll Perm, uh, uh, Ron, Ron Perlman. Perlman yeah. So uh, it's been announced that Neil Marshall is going to direct yeah. the next Hellboy. Yeah. Oh my God. It's going to have uh, the, the Stranger Things guy in it now, which is still good. I still like him. Uh, uh, you know, you know the, the, the policeman, the sort of. Him, he's going to be the new Hellboy, which yeah, I, I still think... I think he's good. You know, it's weird that Hellboy is basically going to be whoever didn't play as Cable. Cable. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. They're like the same kind of character. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting to it see this be. one. So, so that's, uh, out, that's, out next, that's out next year, April. So not, yeah, not, not too, too long. Not six too months. Long. Yeah. So we've got Cap uh, Captain Marvel and them. Also, it's going to be very darker. Mm. It's not going to be like the, the previous Hellboys where they were dark in the, I guess... I don't know, they, were, they had a slightly dark, you know, world to it and yeah. monsters and stuff like that, but it wasn't dark. This one's meant to be on the cusp of horror. Oh, Yeah, so it's going to be it's gonna be darker, literally. So I'm interested to see just where they take it and how, exactly. you know, like if they're cutting off heads and all sorts. I want to see what happens. Yeah, because when you think about it, Hellboy, you just exactly. think... Exactly. Because, you know, the, it, it's, it's in the first film where they show the uh, the kind of the origin, isn't it? Is yeah, it, yeah, which yeah. Is the first, I can't remember now, but I, I mean... So, yeah. um, but yeah, it'd be good. It'd be really great to see that. Um, okay, so Creed 2, the trailer's dropped. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of, uh, obviously, the Rocky films, especially Rocky, the first one. I really liked Creed. That was really good, directed by Ryan Coogler. It did really, you know, did shitloads of money. And I kind of thought to myself, right, surely we're not going to see Rocky Balboa again. Right, come on. This is, isn't it? But you know what? He is going to be back and he, Sylvester Sloan is actually like directing this film. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. So this time round, it pits uh, Carl Weathers, uh, sorry, Apollo Creed's son, mm. you know, uh, Adonis, yeah. against Ivan Drago's son from Rocky IV. Oh Blame my, me, look at that. Blame me, Nick. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, it's a full circle now, yeah, isn't it? Like, yeah. wh where else could they go? Like, next is going to be what, Mr. Be, T? Yeah, Mr. T. <laughs> Flipping hell. But anyway, you know what? I was, like I said before, I was a huge fan of Creed. It was a different type of a Rocky film. It wasn't like your typical, hey, mm, like, yeah. Adrian. Like, because yeah, he came from, he's he's come from rich, but he's not, he's not, not like Rocky was struggling, wasn't he? Yeah. But he's kind of like rich already and he's got to prove that he's a good fighter. Exactly. So. And what was great about it was, 
after all these years of Sylvester Stallone playing that character, he got nominated for an Oscar. Mm, yeah, he got nominated best supporting for actor, wasn't best it? Best supporting actor, he got nominated. Yeah. And I was, I was hoping he'd win it, but hey, mm. look, you know what? He got nominated, so that was pretty good. That's good enough. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, go check out that trailer. Also, do you remember this film? And I know, I think, I know you, you've probably seen it. There was a film called Train uh, to Busan. I've heard of it. I've not seen it. Is that the one where there's like a monster or something on the, it, on the, on the train or it, is it something? Yeah, it's, it's basically a zombie film. So it's a South oh, Korean yes, zombie yes, film. Yeah. And it follows the life, uh, the day in the life of kind of like about six or seven different mm. characters. And they got to catch a train uh, to Busan, which mm. is in South Korea. But the city is overrun with mm. with with zombies, and it did really well, obviously within South South Korea, in Asia, and internationally as well. Well, James Wan, who is the director of Conjuring, Conjuring, Aquaman, Man. involved in the, all these sort of uh, paranormal activity films and Insidious, and exactly all of that. He's done all of it. He wants to remake that film. Then so make it so, they may, and it it will happen. So what train to? I'm just trying to think now. Train to where? Where would be like mm, a train to Oxford Circus? That would be really good. <laughs> no. Train to Piccadilly. Oh my gosh! Um, be delayed anyway. Put it that way. Yeah, be a exactly. strike. So there'd be no train. If it's London transport, trust me, there's already zombies on it. <laughs> um, all right. And finally, just before we f- uh, finish off, uh, this one's a, this one's a, this one's a, that's all this one. When, when you put this on the list, I thought, what's this? What's, what's he talking about? I just had to mention. And then this. I watched it, and I was like, okay. I, I had to mention this because you and I we've spoken about, you mm. know, Terence Howard. We mentioned this last week. Last week. Now, Terence Howard, listeners, Terence Howard was the original War Machine. Yeah. Well, he was the kind of he was Rhodey. Yeah, yeah. Rhodes from Iron Man One. From Iron yeah. Man One, and then shit happened where maybe he asked for a bit more money or he wanted a bit more like billing in the next film and then negotiations broke down and then he said, you know what? Screw you lot. I'm not doing this. And mm. then they went off and hired uh, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle, yeah. And he's been War Machine ever since. Well, apparently um, he was being interviewed, Terence Howard, and he kind of, apparently he's buried the hatchet with with Robert Downey Jr. and stuff. And then one of the questions that was asked him, <laughs> hey, if Marvel came back and offered you a role, what would you say? And his answer was simply, fuck him. <laughs> 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 I just thought that was brilliant. And he it was, was so straight face, isn't it? So straight, straight face. face. He said, oh yeah, a lot of my fans have been asking, you know, they want me to be to come back and they liked me in that role. But and that's it, F him, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that, that was it. It was just literally like, you know what? Yeah, you know what? They could call me. Mm but I didn't give a shit. Yeah. And on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of movie news. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to um, the box office top 10. Let's do it. And sitting in at number 10, we've spoken about this film for the last like six weeks, for God's sake. 60, nearly, nearly 65. I'm pretty sure by the time we're actually saying this, reporting this, it would have hit 65 yeah. million. And we are talking about Mamma Mia, here we go again. It took 326 grand. It's nearly hit 65 mil and it's in at number 10. And in at number nine, another film which has just been killing it all over the world. It has just, been, yeah, yeah. Breaking records is Incredibles 2, which is sitting comfortably at 55 million. So 55 million, you know. I know we say this all the time. I mean, th- this film was it's just breaking records left, right and centre. Uh, think about the worldwide box office of that as well. I think that's nearly broken. It, it's a bill. Easily. Yeah. yeah it's easily. A, definitely a bill worldwide. Look at these films, man. If they, if they spend a hundred million and they get 10 times back, isn't that worth it? Lucrative. That's all I've got to say is <laughs> for That's the word, you know, lucrative. Yeah. So give us some. <laughs> Number eight, Christopher Robin, a film which we haven't seen. It's on its way out. It's done well, you know. You know, it's been mm. it's been in the box office for quite a while. I remember it being in number one for about a couple of weeks, and yeah. number two and thereabouts. Um, number seven, The Predator. Mm. Now, yeah, we yeah we, we you know we saw this. You liked it. I was a bit uh, about it. Mm. Um, it's still raking in the money. You know, it's done more than half a million in the week, which is good. But it is slipping out though. It is slipping out. It's slipping out. I, I think, think word not... of mouth is kind of like getting out. And yeah. All right. The Black Landsman was in for a while and it's less of a big blockbuster film yeah so yeah, yeah exactly Predator's number seven now next week could be number 10 or not even there not even in the top 10 
a film which we both yeah we both saw this right didn't we yep. yeah so this is mile 22 this is sitting in at number six and oh god hang on how that's, long has it been out this that's that's after one week that's after one week that's that's low and it's in number six yeah not even a million <laughs> i know i think it's on its way out yeah <laughs> So it didn't it didn't go to full mile, did it? <laughs> <laughs> Not at yeah, all. Eleven twenty two. Exactly. Bloody, Bloody hell! All right, so that's mile twenty two at number six. The Nun, which I still can't believe this film is still going on. The Nun of the three films, Predator, Mile twenty two, <laughs> and The Nun. I preferred both of the other two. <laughs> exactly. The Nun for me is the worst one, but yet that's still doing totally. That goes to show how reputation can sometimes get you money. Yes. Because the, the nun has a reputation of the conjuring, of Annabelle, all of that. And, and not only that, it doesn't matter what critics think of films because the reviews of the nun have been like poor, mm. like one star reviews, two star reviews. But you know what? People think, fuck it, I don't give a shit. I'm mm. still going to go out and watch it. Yeah. And it's raking in the money. And the trailer was really scary. The trailer got banned on YouTube, you know, because it was too scary. Oh, shit. So that alone... Tells people the hype, oh, yeah, you know, so the yeah. hype surrounding yeah. it, right? Okay, all right, so that's number five. Number four is King of Thieves. I haven't seen this film, neither have I. And you know, close to four mm. million, it's a couple hard of weeks to tell. It's been out, so it's doing okay ish, but yeah, for a British film, you know, big actors, Michael Caine, all the rest of them, it's not doing as well as I would think it could do, yeah, yeah, you I'm know, a- Ray Winston. Yeah. Charlie Cox, dead, uh, Daredevil. Daredevil. Exactly. So you've got all these like great actors in there. But I'm really surprised that it's done more than Mile 22. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it'll probably still take like, you know, maybe a couple of hundred thousand. All right. So sitting in at number three is a film which has done really well mm. uh, worldwide. And it's c- continuing to do well over here, I think. So it's Crazy Rich Asians. And it's a film that I've I've heard about. It's an all Asian uh, star cast and it's got like the guy from Simple Favour. Yes, he's, he's in, in it. it. Yep. And, and Michelle. Yo. Yeah. No, and then Michelle Yo, And also, oh, what's her name? From Humans. Is it something Chan? Gemma Chan. Gemma Chan. Yeah, British actress. Humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's really good. Yeah, I love, I love Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crouching yeah. Tiger. Oh, man. Yeah. Just, all, just classic, classic, yeah. classic film. Um been in classic films all right so that's crazy rich asians now a simple favor is at number two you mm. saw it and then you know what i did actually manage to go oh, out and did? see this okay yeah. what, and what you think? know what i liked it's it all right isn't it yeah i, I liked it's it right. I, I wasn't kind of expecting it yeah and the only the only downer right the only downer on this is this right and ladies and gentlemen this is going to be a spoiler but i need to kind of speak to you about it so if you don't want to hear about the ending of this film just like kind of like Next minute, block yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Fast, Fast forward. forward. <laughs> okay, she gets knocked over by a car. Yeah. And what the hell? It was just so weird about that whole, <laughs> like, come on. Like, th- and then she starts crawling and then mm. I just thought, nah, there would have been serious damage there. Mm. And then, like, just that one 30 second bit, I was like, oh God. But I allowed it's, it. Yeah, a bit comedy at the end, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, a bit comedy at the end, but I allowed it. But you know what? It was interesting. Mm, yeah. It was some funny stuff in there. And it you're was, right about the whole, uh, I think you kind of said, um, like the humour, Deadpool type humour, yeah. humour type of thing. Your bride, yeah, sorry, yeah, bridesmaids. Sorry, yeah. bridesmaids type of humour. Yeah. And the, the disparity between, even the height between uh, Anna Kendrick's character and Blake Lively, it's like two different, like two different worlds. Exactly. Crazy. Like Arnie and um, Danny Dan DeVito. DeVito. Yeah basically all right so that's a simple favor go out and check out that film and the uk's number one film this week is the house with a clock mm. in its walls yeah not on the walls in the in walls yeah its walls that's that's quite important yeah because what does that mean that the house can manipulate time, time? who knows maybe thanos dropped the time stone on what, the house and what else is in the walls mm-hmm Exactly. This this stars Kate Blanchett, got her name right. Bing, bling, 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 bling. Yep. And Jack Black, along with a youngster whose name I don't know. No. But he he looks like a good actor. Yep. Do you know who's directed by? I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you. Alright, okay. So I'm it, gonna surprise you. You're, is not gonna, it directed, you're not gonna even you're not gonna know. Is it directed by uh Steven Spielberg? Oh my no. <laughs> 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 no it's directed by the same person who directed uh cabin fever 
Eli Roth. Yes. You are kidding <laughs> yes. me. Eli Roth is on a children's fantasy movie. This is... Yeah, this is very not Eli Roth. That's but unspeakable. Yeah, he's... Maybe there's more in the walls than than what. Ah, <laughs> but what is it? What is this rated? Is it? Is it like a? No, it's just a children's fantasy. It's a, this it's is like a children's Harry film. Harry Potter type kind of fantasy oh. stuff and Disney type, you know, fantasy. So he's kind of like moving away from that. And yeah, he's he's probably thinking, hey, this is where the money is. It sure is. All right, sure, well, yeah. well done. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to hopefully try and make some time for it. But have you heard anything you about it? Gonna, you ain't going to watch it. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I'm like, is it Eli Roth? You ain't going to watch Cause, it. Because when I, I think of Eli, Eli Roth, yeah. <laughs> not, when, I, when I think of Eli Roth, I think like hostile. Hostile, exactly. I, I think yeah. like, you know, blood, like yeah, brains being yeah. splattered about and yeah, clocks exactly. on walls. Mm. It might have a little bit of, from what I've seen, it does look a bit, there are some parts that look a bit Tim Burton-ish, a little bit darker, ah. but in a, in a children's way, if you know yeah, what I mean. So sure. it's not going to have any... It's not dark, nah, no, nah, no blood no, or anything. No, 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 no. All right, okay. Now, talking about. Talking about what? Did you just mention what? Christopher Nolan? Uh, no, I didn't. No, you didn't <laughs> mention Christopher Nolan. No, sorry. Oh, no, maybe, sorry. Maybe T- Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I don't know why, but I just thought you mentioned uh, Christopher Nolan. No, but the reason why I mentioned Christopher Nolan, or you mentioned it, yeah. is because. Tell mm. us about this 4K yeah. Nolan collection. 4K Nolan collection. That is a collection <laughs> of high density visual entertainment. Yes. Yeah. So you're looking at Dark Knight, Dark, well, the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. Inception. Wow. Imagine seeing that in 4K. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, what's the space one called again? Uh, Interstellar. Interstellar. My mind has gone mad. Interstellar as well i think dunkirk might be on there as well i think i'm not too sure it should be because you gotta see that yeah the visuals on that one all practical planes and everything so yeah there's a collection that's out uh just this week actually right uh, of all those films in 4k and that is a like i said a collection of high density exactly (laughs) visual entertainment it's gonna look perfect especially interstellar interstellar interception sorry interception inception (laughs) yes those two films in 4k must look good I f- Must look good. no doubt. I mean, I remember watching uh, Inception. I saw Inception twice. Like you need mm, to watch Inception mm, like, like a couple of times. Yeah. Actually, I saw it twice in cinema and then a couple of times like mm. you know away from that. And it's, it's visually, it is a stunning mm. film. But Interstellar as well. Yeah. Wow, man. And the science a bit when they, when they go for the black hole type thing and when space bends and just all that. It's just oh man, because you, you try and visualize what would that look like. What would it look like? Even a scientist, scientists try to visualize it and do calculations. And but no matter what they do, you just won't know until you, you actually do it. Know. But what they show us looks like it could be a close depiction of what it looks like when space bends and you go through a wormhole and the Einstein Rosen bridge kicks in and all that kind of mad mad stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> You know what is crazy? What? You, you you coming out with all this stuff. Well, where the <laughs> hell does it come from? What, the Einstein Rosenbridge? Yeah, so you know what, about Einstein Rosenbridge? What the hell? Albert Einstein and I think his name's is it David Rosen. I can't remember, but yeah, they they, they theorized uh, uh, what it, what it would be like to go through a wormhole and how space and time literally fold in on itself. And what you would experience as you literally go through it, like sp- spaghettification, I think they call it. Right. When your matter is literally pulled apart on a subatomic level. And it's something that you, you, you will struggle to even think about, like literally happening. Yeah. Because on such a small level, space, it's almost like, okay, everyone at home, yeah. If you get like a, like a, like a, like a either, even, either a piece of paper or like a, a like a knack pin. <laughs> get a knack pin or a bit of cloth yeah and if you get this bit of cloth and you put something heavy on the cloth i've got nothing heavy at the moment maybe maybe i'll put i'll put this spoon on the paper oops and this spoon weighs a certain amount of density now in a sort of black hole situation this spoon would weigh a massive amount of millions of tons or whatever and this is space it's something so heavy goes on space and it's so heavy that space cannot handle it this item goes through the fabric of time space and makes a hole like that through it that's how you get a black hole because something so heavy just goes through it and space can't handle it you get a black hole which is a space between space and let you go in there and come out another side which we don't know where it's going to be so 
that's an Einstein Rosenbridge. Oh, <laughs> the best I can explain it in my uh, God. in my living room. I just filmed all of that, so, and now I'm going to put this up on our <laughs> on our Instagram page. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> that was mad, mad so science. Uh, is shit right science now. is deep, you know. It is. I'm telling you. So, yeah, Interstellar. I think sort of shows us that in in the way they show it and it's quite it's quite it's quite clever actually yeah they use real scientists to get the message across which and i think he did a lot of research and he wanted to get the yeah. science bit all right yeah as exactly. much as possible yeah. anyway exactly. no that's fantastic no thanks for that um oh, and I've, what, oh. I've ruined my my program I'm not gonna say <laughs> <laughs> i need to find it again <laughs> no um all right and tell us about Fahrenheit 451. Fahrenheit 451 is a sci-fi drama thriller film. Stars Michael B. Jordan and uh, General Zad. Neil before Zad. Zad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, uh, Michael Shannon. Yeah, he's really good. And, yeah, he's a good, good actor. You know, he's got a phrase that he's made up or they made up because of him. So he's meant to be such a good actor in, in the industry that he's known for doing things on a one take, like a one take wonder. Oh. But they don't call it with him, one take wonder. If you as an actor did a really good take and it was done in one, yeah. they call it Shannon. Oh, you Shannoned it. Oh. He's, yeah, so he's really known as doing things in one take and just with like great energy that if you do it in one take, you Shannon it. You Shannon it. Yeah. Which is what we, we Shannon it all the time yeah. when we do the show. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but this film is set in a not too distant future where text books anything to do with reading is banned mm. so you cannot have a book you cannot own the bible you cannot own the quran you mm. cannot have any a newspaper everything like text wise writing is banned so they act as a sort of textual fire brigade right they go around finding anyone that's got any text and um, they burn it okay that's their job and it's like a it's like a it's, it's a massive thing it's almost like they're superstars right. you, get, you, get, you get these big billboards and advertisements of michael b jordan's character because he's he's burned down this building that had all these books and stuff like that yeah and uh so in this film they slow well michael b michael, michael b jordan's character slowly starts to starts to think why am i burning mm. these texts like what what am i burning because he's never read anything before like yeah. he never He's never seen text. What is it about this written. stuff? Exactly. Yeah. So it's almost like, it's almost like if you spin it, it's almost like today people are told to read. That's where the, that's where you get your knowledge rather than, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't read, a lot of people don't do their own research. And it's almost like saying that now, like this is something we should do. And in, in the future, they're not doing it. No. You know, so it's almost like we're going to all turn into zombies if we don't do it. So his character starts to think, okay, I, I want to find out a bit more about this. But, why, why am I burning these texts? What's in these books? What, what, what am I not knowing? Yeah. So he starts to be a bit more woke mm. and starts to, you know, I guess, uh, he, he starts to go against Michael Shannon's character and they have conflict. Yeah. There's also, there's also these like terrorist groups that want, you know, text to get out there. Sure. So he's f at first fighting them. Yeah. But then sooner or later, he starts to understand them and starts to, and you know. And he then... Does, it, does he then become one of the rebels or something? Well, people got to find out. If they, they got to go and watch the film. Okay. But yeah, you can, you can imagine that sort of happening. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it's got Sophia Boutel as well. Yeah, and she we, was in The Mummy and she was in Kingsman as the, the lady with the yeah. sort of... Uh, the prosthet uh, prosthetic... Prosthetic, like, blade uh, leg. Like yeah. She was cutting she was people kicking up. Yeah. And we saw her uh, re even more recent in um, Hotel Artemis. Mm, mm, mm. She turned up in that as well. I've got to see that. Still yeah. haven't seen it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that sounds really interesting. Mm. Okay, so ladies and gents, uh, ladies and gents, that that is what's out on Blu-ray. Go check them out. Obviously, the the Christopher Nolan stuff. If you haven't seen Interstellar, go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Just watch it, like you know, for the visuals and for the science. All right. So now, what is new on streaming and on trailers? We got some new stuff this week. We have, and there's a film on here that I want to kind of like you know speak about, and ba 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 ba. What, Apostle? Yeah, you go, yeah, go, tell us about Apostle. Apostle is a deep looking film. That's all I'm going to say. It's, oh my gosh, it is a film, it's based in, I think it's based, it's based in the UK, I believe. It's, uh, it stars Dan Stevens, who also was in, uh, he's been in The Guest. Uh, he was I in, love that film. what's that uh, TV show? The, the, Legion. No, well, yeah, he's. In, I was coming on to yeah. that one. Yeah, he's Legion. He's 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 
He's, oh. His character is like a, a nutter in a David Holler, a Keller, sorry, in Legion. Yeah. But he was in... Uh, the British one. Yeah, what's it called again? The sort of period film, the TV show. Down to Abbey, sorry. Yeah. I've never seen it, I've sorry guys. It. But yeah. he does really well in that. But yeah, he's a really versatile actor. Yeah. If you've seen him in Legion, he's a nutter in the truest sense of the word, but yeah. he's mad powerful. Yeah. But uh, this one stars him. Uh, it's also directed by the same person who directed The Raid, Gareth Evans. Uh, Gareth Evans. Yes. All right. It's also di- it's also <laughs> starring... Bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's also starring Michael Sheen. Okay. Great British actor. Yeah. But this film is... It's almost like, uh, you know... Uh, the Witch, that sort of period. Oh. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy, crazy film. So from the trailer, it looks like there's some sort of cult thing happening. And it's like uh, Dan Stevens' character is trying to rescue his sister, who I think has been taken in by this cult. And literally, I think it becomes clear as time goes by that I think first she feels she's in a good place. She's not. Right. She needs to get out, but he's trying to get her out, but it's not going to be so easy. But I've seen a few clips of people in this cult or this group of some mad, mad, mad torture. Oh, uh, like scenarios. Really? You can imagine those, those ye old like, <laughs> torture chambers. And like, yeah. there, there was a scene in, I think, one of the Fast and Furious films where they use an old school, old school torture technique. Yeah. Where they get the, they get a buck, they get a rat, put it in a bucket. <laughs> And then they heat, they heat one side of the bucket. So the rat has only got one place to go and yeah. that's through you. Yeah. And the rat will dig and bite, bite and, and scratch through your belly yeah. to get away from the heat. So you can imagine those, those medieval torture techniques coming out in this film. I saw some contraptions that were just looking disgusting. And this person directed The Raid, which is a brutal film. It is. And a really good film. So yeah. this person, Gareth uh, Evans, has now got budget now got more credibility, got some good actors Imagine, here. Imagine, yeah, what you're going to do This more film money. is looking good. It yeah, does sound Apostle. Good. Yeah. Apostle. I'm going to check Guys, that trailer remember. out. Yeah. And just talking about kind of like torture and it just kind of like reminded me when, um, this is a while ago now, I went to Madrid, right? So went to one of the plazas over there and it was a place where they had the, the Spanish Inquisition mm. and they had a chair which was used for torture and you know what, this chair... <laughs> It's a torture chair, right? Sit on the chair. They put this thing around your head. And at the back, it was a, a screw that you would turn. And what does that screw do? You, you turn it. Into your brain. Into your skull. <laughs> this was, you know what? Medieval. They were... The, they got some crazy they were, shit. They were bastards, man. They were crazy. And they've got these things that can stretch your limbs, innit? <laughs> like tear your knee apart, your yeah. elbow apart. This film has been rated on IMDb 8.6. Yeah, for a, for a horror thriller. That doesn't usually happen. That doesn't usually... 8.6. Yeah. Guys, that, that, Apostle. I'm going to check this out. Apostle, it's coming out in October. All right. The 12th. Soon. Very. So watch out for our review. Okay. Um, another film that I want to kind of mention is... So I saw this trailer and I started reading about this buzz about this film and it's, it's actually an entry into the Oscars for 2019 and for best one of the, the best foreign uh, picture films or or actually no they don't like to call it foreign anymore now it's the uh, film not in the english language okay they've kind of like made that distinction okay. now because foreign foreign is a, it's a point of view it depends yeah. on your own where, where you stand because where you stand, yeah. to some people like america's foreign england's foreign, it's foreign. so it's it's a it's a, yeah I, I think that's good actually yeah so a film is called Border and it's written by, it's based on a, sorry, it's written by the guy who wrote Let the Right One In. Do you remember oh, that film? Say No More. Yeah. 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 Swedish so, or Danish or something, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So it's a Scandinavian film and this, so I don't know the actors or anything like that, but I started reading about this and people are calling it like mesmerizing, astounding, uh, fantastic. They've like, seriously, there's so much hype surrounding this film, right? And, when you watch the trailer, you realise that it stars a woman. She she's kind of looks, she plays a border patrol officer. So when people are coming through customs, she stops them. But she has a skill where she can smell people 
and she can and she knows if a person is bringing in maybe drugs or or or, or, or something like that. She's like a sniffer dog. She basically is. And you know what the thing is? It reminds me of. Um, do you remember the TV show Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, Vincent and yeah. Uh, Linda Hamilton. Yeah, Linda I used Hamilton. to watch that show. Come on. <coughs> yeah, me Vincent. too. Vincent, I love that show. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like basically Beauty and the Beast. Oh. She looks. She looks like. She looks like the Beast, right? And she's oh. her, her, her 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 features are kind of like a bit strange looking, but she has this. She has this skill of like sniffing, and she can like you know figure out whether or not someone's doing something dodgy. One day she meets another guy, and the smell that he emits is is different. Is similar. Is it? Yeah. And, oh my gosh! And 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 the story is then it, it it goes off into kind of like this story about like you don't know who you are and I can tell you about your history and what you where you come from, and it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. I saw the trailer; wow. it looks it wicked. Sounds good. It so does it sounds really like good. the director's captured that the essence of 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 relationships in some sort of way, relationships that are not your norm and from not regular surroundings and people that are maybe classed as outsiders totally. coming into in, into your world as yeah. it were yeah so mm. it's got like kind of this uh, beauty in the beast element on it it's got like the the f- um what was that film guillermo del toro one that was recently oh, uh, shape, of, shape water. of water yeah, shape yeah, yeah. Of water. Yeah, yeah it's got that kind of like that a fantastical element mm. to it as well it's a really cracking trailer and like i said before the buzz around it is is pretty strong it's been put forward for the for uh, one of the oscars that's interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look out for that yeah, one. Yeah, go check that one out. Yeah. That, that one's going to be out quite soon then, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, October the 11th. It's going to be a busy week that week. It is. Mm-hmm. So what else Damn. have we got? Into the Dark, which is a series on Hulu. Mm. It's a bit different. It's meant to be like a thriller, horror type uh, series. Uh, maybe, I don't know, kind of reminiscent to like... Uh, tells from the crypts type thing but you know not that but kind of maybe in that vein yeah but the thing about this is that it's going to be a series that they release an episode every month mm. and each episode it'll almost be like a mini type of uh each episode is going to be okay self-contained but have a link to the previous so for example the first one will, will come out in october okay. and be halloween second one it will be november thanksgiving third one would be christmas oh. it's like it'll be real time type thing but it will have a subtle link to the previous episode in a way sounds interesting so it won't be a series in its normal sort of format where you know it's the same characters and literally something happens one week and next week they pick up on it no sure. different no. characters different and characters. different right, okay. different locations everything is different but tied together with the same yeah. weaving you know so it's yeah. gonna be an interesting way to tell a story it is sounds interesting a bit more creative freedom but still brought together by the same uh spine mm. Mm. so spine, into the dark hulu s- spine tingling uh-huh i see where you went with that one mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay talking about spine tingling tell us about this next one the uh, the house sorry the haunting of hill house yeah which is a netflix uh netflix exclusive movie or film is that what they're called yeah a netflix exclusive exclusive. yeah Yeah. so it's uh looks interesting it's it's, but you know your your typical haunting type movie looks Mm. like it's gonna have a few jump scares this one wasn't anything that looked like a massive massive hit but the trailer looked interesting enough that i thought do you know what i'm gonna give it a go yeah because uh, i like i like to i like haunted type movies and tv shows or whatever it I might be i don't remember seeing a really good one in recent years that's the thing so yeah. anytime i see one where the trailer looks all right yeah i give it a go because this one looks don't get me wrong it did look a bit bog standard but yeah. in the same way it looked different the way it was filmed and okay the way uh the sound was as well it looks a little bit different to the norm so mm-hmm. i thought you know what i'm gonna add this on a list i'm gonna give this a go and yeah. it's netflix so it's easily accessible as well exactly. so exactly we'll see we'll see but yeah that's that's out uh this week as well right okay interesting so yeah so that's uh that's what's new on streaming and trailers guys all right go check them out ladies and gentlemen check and, it out. and let us know what you think uh moving on now to anniversary corner and anniversary corner <laughs> we've got some really interesting films here we've got so a mixture we've got a mixture we got, and this is what i love about us bringing these films out to, to everyone 
they, they, yeah. they, they there's were a reason for this mixture actually mix. there's a reason for this well most of it yeah <laughs> some of it some of it <laughs> one of them <laughs> <laughs> and um so let's go back to 2008 Mm. Let's go back 10 years. 10 years. I put this on for a reason because Mamma Mia is in the charts at the moment. It is. And 10 years later, it's still it's well. Still, it's still kind of like, you know, doing well. Mm. Or th- in the theatre in West End and like, exactly. you know, in, 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 2008, Mamma Mia. I don't, I don't even, I, 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 where was I? What was I doing? Oh, Iron Man. Sorry, Dark Knight. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Proper films. That is, that is, those are the films that we were watching. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mamma so, Mia wasn't even on the radar. No, it wasn't. No, mate. I mean, I do remember it like kind of launching and mm. then it being this yeah. huge film. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I just didn't have the, the, I don't think I had the energy for it. Yeah, me too. It wasn't on the radar at you know? all. At all. And I, th- I think it's been on TV countless times. Yeah. I, I still, I'm, whilst I've been flicking, I'm like, okay, let's have a look. Let's have, but you know what? I just still haven't, haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, me too. But it was a big but, hit. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and this one's a big hit as well. Exactly. Part Probably two. even bigger hit. Yeah. Who knows? All right. So that was Mamma Mia. And that was 10 years ago. And I'm sure loads of people have seen it. And people can say loads of things about it. Mm. Uh, you know, the music. That's what I remember. Mm. Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Mamma. Uh, how, I don't know the rest. I don't, no, that's where, that's where I'm lost. <laughs> All right. So 15 years ago, yeah, man. a little movie, a trilogy, basically, uh, part of a trilogy. This film came out. So this is Scary Movie 3 from yeah. 15 years ago. Yeah. And th- I think there's about six of them now, I think. <laughs> so, But yeah, for me, like, this is my favourite one. <laughs> is it? This okay. one for me, but even now when it comes on. <laughs> I do watch it and it does make me laugh. Hang on, hang on. Tell me, is this the one where at the end it's the Tom Cruise? Does he do the Tom Cruise? No, I don't f- does he? No, I don't think so. Which, oh, okay, no, no. No, this one, this is the one that takes place out of Signs, <laughs> uh, The Ring. Yeah. Uh, eight Mile, I bet it's eight, eight Miles in there as this well. Is it, Kevin yeah. Hart's in this one. That's oh why I popped in there because they're doing night school later. Uh, so I thought yeah. popping some Kevin Hart. But uh, he's got a small role in it, but he's got a, a few, he's, he's in it basically, but it's not, obviously he's not Kevin Hart at the time. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's funny. Charlie Sheen's in it. Charlie Sheen. Uh, it's just, the, the, the signs bit they take the piss out of is so funny. They've got it this is. kid in it. That's just, this film for me is the best scary movie and there's a couple of <laughs> scenes in it that are so subtle, but still to this day can yeah. make me laugh. It's Wicked. just, it's just a stupid film. Uh, Anna, Anna, Anna Ferris. Anna Ferris, who's yeah. Who's Star-Lord's ex now. Ex, uh, yeah. Yeah, but she's in it. She does a good job. Uh, you got, uh, Oh, her name's gone now, but she's the the, the sister, like uh, Anna Anna Faris's friend. Oh, I can't, can't remember her name now, now, but yeah, she's really good in it, like really, really good. Yeah. Uh, they just it's just a good cast altogether, and yeah. the film. I mean, the films are even Eight Mile. I don't know how Eight Mile fits into the scary <laughs> movie, but it, it fits. You know, the Eight Mile part. Even Fat Joe's in it. <laughs> Fat Joe's in the film, and there's a oh, there's a, like a little cameo because yeah. one of the characters is pre- is pretending to be Slim Shady. Yeah, they have a little rap battle. <laughs> It's so funny. Really? So funny. Oh, gosh. Uh, um, Mackay Pfeiffer is in it. Oh, he's in it as he's well. He's in it, yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, not, not him. Sorry, not him. Sorry. Do you know what? So I forget. Mackay Pfeiffer was really in 8 Mile. Yeah, but yeah. the person that plays him is the big guy that was in Hang Time, Coming Together, Hang Time, Putting It On The Line. And he was in Transformers as well. Okay. Biggish guy, but he's not big now, but... He plays Mackay Pfeiffer's sort of role, like, his mad fake dreadlocks. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny, man. Okay. Yeah, it's, just, it's worth a watch, guys. Yeah, Get definitely. back to it. I remember because the, the one that I really, really like, found funny was, I don't actually remember, Tom Cruise, he gave this interview, like in real life, Tom Cruise yeah. gave this interview where um, he's been asked some questions. He's sitting on a sofa somewhere and he starts, starts, starts laughing. And the, it's so like cringe. And you think, oh my God, like he's, he's, he's clearly this is like guy, like he's on drugs. He's, he's like, he's just <laughs> something. And at the end of one of the scary movies, they've got an actor, like a person who looks very yeah, similar to Tom yeah. Cruise do that interview. And I just thought it was genius. Must be a different one. Yeah. yeah that must yeah. be a second or third. Because this came out in 2003. So yeah. Jumper Thunder came out in 2008. Yeah. So it must be a later one. It must be a later yeah. one then. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was Scary Movie 3. Oh, and this one is really interesting. A good good kind of shout out for this one. This was 20 years ago, mm. back in 1998. And this is The Truman Show yeah. starring Jim Carrey. Yeah. And there was another film. Oh, God. What was the other film which was similar to this? I don't know. Liar, Liar, Yes Man. Uh, um, similar to The Truman Show, yeah? In the sense that where you had, he thinks that his, 
he's he's living uh, his his existence is is real no. and it's part of a uh, p- Basically, like, he's. He, this is like part Bruce of Bruce Almighty or something. No, is it? no, I can't remember what it was, what, man. Jim Carrey as well. No, no, no. It's, oh, it was, okay, okay. Yeah, it was a different film. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but it was kind of similar time. Okay, nah. I might, I might think of it later. Yeah, when I, when and I, this is. I think this is written by one of the Kaufmans. Is it? Yeah, one of the Kaufman brothers. I, I, I mm. you know what? I might have to double check this. Yeah, I have to IMDb this. <laughs> the fun, I, got, I got a confession. I put this. I put this film on the list. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think I've seen it from start to finish. That's a really bad thing. I, I remember uh, the mastermind, the guy that was in like the studio. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about uh, cabin in the, the cabin in the woods, the horror film. No, like, yeah, no, but I know that one. Oh, okay, but there was another one which was similar to this. Okay, but uh, yeah, the guy that's like the mastermind of the of the whole show, he, the one that's in Ed 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 something. Yeah. He's uh he's always like a spe- he's always an astronaut or something. <laughs> he always plays a lot of astronauts. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I saw the parts where it was towards the end where he sort of got found out. But uh, the Truman Show is a, it's a classic film, and I think I need to do my job as a flickster to actually to watch it you and properly need- absorb it because sometimes I think to myself the Truman Show could be real. How yeah. would you know? You wouldn't know until no. until you until it's too late. But it could be real. Yeah, and sorry, no, it wasn't the Kaufman. It was it was a guy called written by uh, An- Andrew Nichol. Oh, but I know I thought, him, Andrew Nichol. Yeah, no, I don't. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> there was another. No, I'm sure there was a film similar to the Truman Show, which came out. I'm uh, not sure. The Truman Show Part Two. Mm, <laughs> the Cable Guy? No, not the Cable Guy. Nah. Nah, okay, I'm just talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which we do every week, guys. Exactly. So Sorry. tune in. Truman Show. So basically something, uh, so he, his name is like Truman. Uh, his name is Truman, isn't Probably it? Probably John Truman. Truman or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, he, he doesn't know it, but mm. his life is just basically being observed by yeah. other people. Where he thinks that he's, you know, his life is. is they're, all, they're, all, they're all actors and stuff. They're all just yeah, like, and and they're all kind of like um, they don't want to. They, they don't tell him this, and or mm. he, he just kind of like you know doesn't realize. I mean, yeah. I saw this. Yeah, look, I mean, I saw, I think I saw this in cinema, like twenty years ago. In cinema, yeah, twenty years ago. Wow. Yeah, I mean, and that was it. I've never seen it since. So, but at the time, it was one of those films where. Jim Carrey does like drama. Drama? What do you mean? Like normally he's like the mask. He's like, you know. Oh, okay. So a bit more, less jokey, kind of less comical. Yeah. And it was kind of like really, um, there was like a social commentary at the time. Like, you know, uh, is the life that we're living, is it really our life? Or it's, it's kind of like relevant for today as yeah, well. Yeah, it is actually. It is. And it's like what you said, you know, is, is this life, is it our life or what? Or, or one big show. To get as many likes as you can. Exactly. And post videos. Yeah. <laughs> so um, on that note, please like us. <laughs> and we'll check the video that we post out on, on our show, on our thing. I All right. Okay. That. So Demolition mm. Man from 20... Demolition Man, you know. 25 years ago. Wesley Snipes, Sylvester Stallone. Sandra Bullock. Sandra yeah. Bullock. And there's a reason why I put this one on here because, yeah, it's a good film. Demolition Man, uh, The Haircut. Uh, was these like that blonde type haircut yeah. that a lot of French footballers used to do? Yep, definitely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was a scene, and like I think in the future this could be something, you know? What the it, sex? Yeah, <laughs> that is so because cute. Because online dating is is at a stage now. What's going to be next? Exactly. So they're going to like get some sort of sensual connection some through sort an of, app. Yes. Or- I'm telling you, man, it's going to happen. It, it is. I it's mean, going to happen. like, you know, and I remember that scene where, where she turns around and says, oh, would you like to like, you know, have sex with me basically? Mm. And he's like thinking, yeah, you know what? Mm. We're going to get down and dirty and like it's Stallone yeah. and like, you know, Bullock, but no, they put yeah. these caps on their heads and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, what the hell is this? It's like I was hoping to do the old fashioned way or something. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it>? exactly. <laughs> but in terms of kind of like uh, as a film, it was like, Wesley Snipes was at the peak, you know, yeah. the top of his career yeah. at that time. It's funny because when I was looking for this in 1993, he made, two other films or three other films I think it was yeah in that year I was yeah. like what the heck 
This guy was Four big, films man. in that year, 93. Yeah. He was like a big, huge action yeah, star. Yeah. And Stallone was obviously in the 80s. He was big in the 80s. Mm. And I think he had cliffhanger yeah, yeah, before yeah, or after yeah, this. And he yeah. was just kind of like having a bit of a resurgence. Mm. But uh, in the 90s, the, I think for Stallone, Demolition Man and Cliffhanger were like kind of like yeah. big films for yeah. him. And it's like kind of, mm. you know, it is what it is. Two action heroes, two like action side heroes, by side. And yeah. And, and, and uh, Wesley Snipes, he had all the best lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. He always does have one kind of weird one-liners where his mouth's all twisted up, in it? <laughs> exactly. Especially in Judge Dredd. I am the law. I am the law. I am the law. I remember that. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Oh okay. Gosh. And then, all right, going a bit kind of serious now. Serious now. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is 30 years ago. And this mm. is, this Gene is Hackman. Willem, Willem Dafoe. Exactly. Yeah. Willem Dafoe, which I've which I've seen now, it is it's not a typo, but that's, that's his name. <laughs> and this is based on a true story mm. set in the sixties in America yeah. about um, basically Some, the the, the, uh, the a guy who did he he was, he was, he was, he was uh, accused of something, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, or he was killed or something. Uh, I saw this film ages ago. You know, I've got to see it again. It's I, one of those films that. If I, at the time you see it and you're like you get so angry I know and you're like oh I don't want to see that again but you, you know, should basically it's it's a true story around the kind of um, uh, you know real event that happened in mm. Mississippi yeah. in the deep south and you've got two kind of cops played by Gene Hackman who was at the t you know height of his top of his career there you know you know brilliant performance and Wilhelm uh, Defoe, and they are trying to solve the, the 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 basically the murder of this guy who has been attacked like you know African American person being attacked he's been kind of lynched and mm, like you know he's yeah. been he's been killed for something that he didn't do or they didn't have the kind of evidence uh, uh, you know at that time and there's a lot of kind of um, you know breaking down stereotypes yeah you know there's a lot of going through kind of like look you know this shit is wrong and but it's also I think a film which is should be like, look, hey, this stuff happened in America. Yeah. We need to speak about it. Exactly, exactly. And it's some it's th things like this happen, maybe or not, maybe not on this level, but today, like there's there, there's still things happening. With uh, I was talking to my American friend the other day, and, and she was telling me about all the unrest between the authorities and civilians, yeah. and it's like it's never going to end. No. So in one era, it was one type of thing in this area it's another type of thing tomorrow is going to be another it's like it's always going to be there in some way shape or form, form. so yeah. uh, Mississippi Burning was a, a great film in its time uh, I got to see it again to refresh my mind on yeah. what's happening but I know uh, the, the disappearance of, of a civil rights activist I think it was wasn't it yeah. so like obviously trying to silence people that are trying to Cover bring up. change and trying to bring things to people's mind you know yeah. so it's, it's, it's mad it's like you know the American football at the moment uh, who's kneeling? Uh, Cap Cap I can never say his name. Yeah. Copernicus. I think yeah. his name's something like yeah. that. Sounds like Copernicus, but it's not. But uh, he's not got a club now. He doesn't play football. Yeah. And but uh, Adi was it um, Nike have Nike. used him? Yeah. They've to used front, him. Yeah. Because they, they. Yeah. So in terms of like, you know, that's a massive, massive global corporation. Mm -hmm. They've put his face up there. Yeah. And they're basically trying to say, look, you know what? We need to change things. Yeah. And the slogan is, uh, uh, so, uh believe in something even if you if it, even if it means you lose everything yeah. or something like that yeah so it's really like a that's a powerful, powerful statement message. not many people can can live by that code you know because uh, to believe in something so much you're willing to lose your job, job your livelihood your, your career, money your, everything you know what i mean so that's a strong message that is strong message yeah so you know respect respect all right so yeah, that's the anniversary corner, guys. Yeah, check mm. them out. Go check out those films and tell us what you think. So now let us move on to the film reviews. Yep. And I know you've got a couple of films that you want to speak about. I've yeah. got a film I want to speak about. But tell us about uh, Night School. Night School, yeah. So as we all know, I went to university. Uh, I dropped out. <laughs> and I had to go and get my degree at Night School. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, Night School, yeah, Kevin Hart... Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany Haddish. Yep. And you've spoken about her before, right? Yeah, yeah. She's a comedian. She's done a lot of good work acting. Uh, she, I think she presented, uh, what was it? She presented a, 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 an award show in America, I think last year or something. I don't know if it was at em Emmys or something like that, but yeah. done really well. But yeah, Night School, it's actually a 
produced by Kevin Hart's production company as well. Mm. Hart Productions, I think it's called. So he's moving in because I think yeah. he's got a big enough name now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. clout. He's got clout. I mean, his, his production company has been around for a while, mm. but I think it's been more active on the, the sort of stand up circuit yeah. and maybe a couple of other uh, sort of smaller films. But this, this one is a massive, like, you know, worldwide release. And uh, so, yeah, stars Ke- Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish. Her name is Tiffany. I got double. I always, I always think her name's something else. But yeah, yeah, they both, they both are larger than life characters. Yeah, uh, pun included for for <laughs> Kevin, Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. He's so like compared to everyone in the film, he's so small. <laughs> but obviously, even a small man can cast a big shadow. Exactly. As Tyrion Lannister says. Yes, and that's what makes him. <laughs> that's what makes him so funny. Like yeah. you know, he overcomes all that shit, and now look at him. He's this, like exactly. this famous guy, man. And it's, it's it's funny because in all the films that I've seen him in. His girl, his girls that he has are so, so hot. They're so beautiful, and they're always so much taller than. But yeah, yeah. The, 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 his 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 misses in in this film. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, she's on an, an, on a next level, next level of, yeah. of existence. Uh, but yeah, so basically, the, the premise is that he uh, in 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 high school he was a bit of a you know he was he's a cool guy. He knew people. He done his thing. You know he he tried, but it turns out that he has got a problem, mm. a learning disability, which yeah. he didn't face in high school yeah. to be able to get help. So he, anytime he tried to do any tests or anything like that, he struggled, he'll bail out, he yeah. wouldn't take the test, he'll fail. Yeah, flunk So he, he flunked it majorly. And uh, obviously he has to enroll in night school later on in life because a, f- a few, a, well, I don't want to spoil it, but a, f- a few uh, events happen that lead him to uh, basically lose his job. Oh. Yeah, so then he has to, before he can get a certain job that he wants, he needs to get his GED. Yeah. I don't, got know, this I, don't thing. Know, I don't know what that is in America, but it's some sort of qualification that is a basic level, or I think just above basic level that some jobs require you to have. Yeah. So he needs to get his GED and the the film is about that, about him getting his GED yeah. amongst him having learning difficulties and facing it overcoming it yeah. tiffany haddish is the night school teacher right okay and you've got all these other characters that are in the class that are funny characters in their own right different characters it's all got that sort of kevin hart kind of sure. vibe to it yeah everyone's wacky yeah and it's just okay to be wacky there's all this shouting that goes on there's all this craziness that happens but it's just okay yeah they as, as a class they all try and they're all there for different reasons one of them is there because if she doesn't get the GED, she goes to prison. Right. So it's almost like a, the judge said to her, go get your GED or you're going to prison. prison. Choose which one. Exactly. There's one person in prison okay. in the class. So he's, he's doing it via satellite, via right. Skype. Okay. Fat Joe, actually. <laughs> Is it? Fat Joe, yeah. Oh my he's gosh. actually in, it's funny actually, because in Scary Movie 3, it's Fat Joe and Kevin Hart again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so another okay. link. But yeah, yeah, so Fat Joe is, he's not, in, in the whole film, he's on Skype basically yeah. in the class like learning crazy and then you've got another character uh another, another few characters that you know that they, they're all wacky they're for different reasons you've got this uh parent this lady who's a parent she's married and she's one of those uh mums that haven't got much confidence and her, right. her husband is a bit uh like abusive to her kind of thing and okay. dominating to her so it doesn't let her do much for herself and she does this she's do she's there to try and get a bit of I guess freedom yeah. and a bit of, you know, self-respect and stuff. So that's why she's sort of there. So they've got, they've got their reasons. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so a few events happen in the film uh, that, oh my gosh, it's mad. That cause, <laughs> that cause them to make the wrong decisions yeah. and have to try and get things back. Like they're trying basically a little bit of a spoiler. They're trying, they realize that they're, they're all shit and they're going to fail. They <laughs> yeah. realize that. So they try and steal the test. <laughs> <laughs> and don't and don't tell me Kevin Hart is at the he's at the at forefront. The forefront. He's at, at the, the forefront, forefront of this. Yeah, it's mad. So I'm not going to tell you whether they steal it or not, okay. but they try and steal the test. Sure. Uh, another thing actually with this film is that when Kevin Hart was in school, he goes the school that he was in when he was <laughs> younger is the school that he's now doing his <laughs> night school at. <laughs> and don't tell me the teachers remember him or something. The, the, one of the one of the students that he had an altercation with, right? He kind of, he didn't bully it well. He kind of done something that would be classed as bullying a little bit. Yeah. 
but uh, that student is now the head teacher oh, <laughs> of the school, yeah. and he 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 basically hates him. Yeah, yeah, it's like they they have their their you know thing. Yeah, so there's different <laughs> dynamics, dynamics to it going all. on. Yeah, 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 so it's mad. Uh, oh, and in, in the background, you got his beautiful uh, missus. Yeah, uh, who actually he proposed to, so he's trying to do right by her by getting his GED and going on to this job that he he needs to make her happy, sort of thing, because she seems to be the rich one in the relationship and she's yeah, paying for everything and he exactly. feels I guess demasculinized the how do you say it demasculinized is that it bro you just it's a world exclusive <laughs> you just said it I just made it up <laughs> demasculinized <laughs> brilliant <laughs> by it uh, so yeah so it's just it's a, it's a funny film okay I'm not gonna lie yeah it wasn't the best Kevin Hart film I've seen <laughs> okay I wasn't laughing through most of it right I was chuckling here and there <laughs> And it was a lot. It was a lot more of the same. There was nothing special about it right. at all. Okay, but it was an entertaining, entertaining film. Okay, entertaining film. That's that's what I can say. It wasn't. You know, it didn't stand out. Yeah, sort of thing. You know, but it was all right. Oh, yeah, okay. so I can say it was all right. I'll give it a six. So six. Uh, what? Uh, good news notes or I'll something? Give it six. Out, literally, as a mark, six out of ten. <laughs> six out of ten. <laughs> Night school. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just think all I just sixty percent. Sixty percent. All I keep thinking about is the poster because it's Kevin Hart inside mm. a locker because mm. you know he's short yeah, enough yeah, to yeah, fit yeah, inside yeah, the yeah. locker, yeah. and that Tiffany had issues like there. Yeah. It just. I just but the performances. The thing is, even though I'm rating it six, the performances. From the actors, mm. I felt they were they were they were you know they were good enough. Yeah, they weren't the performances weren't bad or anything like that. It's just I don't think the the story and the whole film gave anything more than what we were expecting type thing. You know, what do you think this is going to debut as in the in the UK top ten? Uh, probably judging on I saw it on a Saturday night. Uh, it wasn't that packed. Mm, I reckon number three. Number three, okay. No, number two. Sorry, I reckon number two. Yeah, yeah number, number two. two. Yeah, okay. I think. All right. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that one turns out. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Night school, eh? Night school. Go watch it, guys. Yep. Okay, so the next film I'm going to review is a film called Wildling. Okay, wild. So is this like Game of Thrones territory? I thought, I, you know, I thought you were going to say that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. I know it's not, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Wildling is a film about, it stars Liv Tyler, also stars your friend, uh, Brad Dourif, the guy that voiced Chucky. Yeah. And he's been in all sorts of films. Yeah, yeah, he's of course. in a- Alien Resurrection. He's, he's been, been in loads. In, yeah. yeah, he's a bit of a Game sinister of character. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. He was that kind of weird guy. Oh, sorry. No, Lord of the Rings, I was meant to say. Oh yeah, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. that weird guy that held the king under some sort of spell, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also stars uh, a good performance actually from an actress called Belle Powley. Okay. Uh, so basically the premise of Wildling, it's like a horror type thriller type film. And uh, what's his name? Brad Dourif's character. I'll just call him Brad. Yeah. His character's daddy in the film. He's daddy to Anna. who is played by uh, Belle Powley. And he has Anna from a young age. Uh, Anna is kept in a room all her life. Oh gosh. Yeah, one of those ones. Kept in a room. He gives her medication. He tells her, don't go outside. The wildlings will get you. It's like, it's almost like one of those sort of, uh, like, you know, those stories you hear of someone keeping their child, yeah. you know, strapped down and stuff all their life and whatever. But he doesn't abuse her in any other way apart from medicating her, which seems like abuse, but you realise later what's it, what he's doing. Oh. Yeah, so... He tells her, don't go outside, the wildlings will eat you, all that kind of stuff. So one day, am I going to go into spoilers in this one? Mm, let me see, what shall I do? What shall I do? I'll go into semi-spoilers, yeah? Okay, go on. Okay, so uh, one day something happens to the dad and this means that the young the, the young girl is now released into the custody of the state, Uh-oh. which she's picked up by a police officer, Liv Tyler. Uh, so there, there is a Lord of the Rings type link there, actually, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so he picked up by Liv Tyler, who's a sheriff of the town. I'll just say, it doesn't she's not a convincing sheriff? I don't know what it is, but because I've seen her as an elf for so long, yeah, exactly. I don't really buy her as a, as a sheriff. This is I don't really buy it, yeah. her, but yeah, she's, she's a sheriff. Too, she's too elegant for her to be a yeah, sheriff. Yeah, she just <laughs> I don't know, I just didn't really buy it, but yeah, she's a sheriff anyway. And she, uh, the young girl's taken to hospital. They realise that she's been given this medication that it seems to stunt someone's maturity. It stunts their 
is it estrogen or it stunts stuff that makes them mature stuff that makes them grow right it kind of stunts those uh you know characteristics in the person right so they think oh she's been abused by the, the dad so until they try and find their permanent home Liv Tyler takes her into her home the oh, sheriff takes oh. her home it's not always a good thing it's mad I know so takes her home realises she's a bit she's a bit rough around the edges to say the least I mean she's a young girl she put, maybe she's about 17 I think at the time yeah and uh, she's just she likes walking around barefooted uh, she's just very raw right uh, at dinner time she gives her a hamburger and she just like throws up, throws the bun away, throws the letters. She just gets the meat and starts eating it like a feral kind of beast. Okay, She's I like, see. Just, just eating the burger, you know? Just like no no messing around, no bun, no chips. That's just what you do. Trust me. When we go Nando's. <laughs> Trust me. Medium, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so she just eats and like... There's another scene where she's the the sheriff's got a the sheriff lives with her brother, who right. kind of seems like her son, but it's not it's her brother, and they're having dinner. They're eating. It's weird actually. They're having like bangers and chips, like in America. I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay. Having chips and bangers, and she eats her sausage just raw. Doesn't eat the potatoes. No, I say raw. Sorry, it's cooked, but she just eats it like she's an animal. Yeah. And she looks at the boy's food. I thought she was gonna start like eating his sausage. Yeah, but well, she does. Uh, she does because funnily enough, actually, before they eat. The boy realizes she's a, she's a bit weird, and she says to the boy, "Where did I come from?" And he says, "Oh, oh you came from where everyone comes from, like you know, your mum and dad done their thing." She said, "Huh, huh?" And he gets an idea to show her, so he shows her a porno. Oh. <laughs> he shows her a porno. You don't really, you don't see it. All you hear is the, uh, 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 uh. Yeah. and she's looking at it like, "Oh my gosh, what's that? Yeah. How did I come from that?" So just after that, you see a scene of them two eating yeah. sausage and chips. Oh, okay. So she eats her sausage and then she looks at his sausage. And I thought, oh my God, she's going to get sexual. Something's going to happen. Yeah. But she just grabs it and starts eating it. <laughs> I thought she was going to do something else. <laughs> it's a mad scene. Yeah. Mad scene. But basically she's feral. She's uh, like a, a, an attractive girl, but she's yeah. rough around the edges. Sure. So, you know, he's. I think he's semi-attracted to her, but she seems a bit like beastly weird. kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, throughout the film, she's trying to. She goes. She gets sent to school with the boy. She's. She can't interact with people. Mm. She walks around the school barefooted. Because she's she's feral. She's just like you know a beast kind she of thing. She thinks she's an animal in the wild. Something. Exactly. So she walks around barefooted. It's a bit mad. It's just like she can't interact with people. And bit by bit over the film, uh, she starts making mistakes. Someone tries to come on to her uh -oh. her animal instinct literally her animal <laughs> instinct comes out she bites the guy on the, on, the, on the neck he's dead from that shit starts going downhill right and people are out for her she's on the run all sorts of shit happens basically yeah. but as the film gets towards the end you start to see why the dad was giving her these injections so to try and stop her from turning into maturing into something so that's, that's where I'm going to leave it what like werewolf or something that's where I'm going to leave it <laughs> but she matures into something else not so, a werewolf but something else so um, alien no so by the end of the film do we yeah. get to see the, yes. the thing yeah right yeah. okay yeah oh this sounds interesting yeah wildling <laughs> flipping out oh. the wildlings you know nothing John Snow <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh alright okay and what is that is that out on uh, Netflix or anything like that it's out on uh, Amazon Okay. Yeah, so you can Amazon and on this one. Yeah. And I'm sure you can find it other places as well. But yeah, Amazon have it. Amazon Prime. Okay, that sounds interesting. You know what? And I've got to say one thing. It sounds very similar. Well, t tonally and kind of like thematically, it does sound similar to the, uh, the film that I'm going to speak about. And this one oh. is called Hold the Dark. Okay. And it has got that kind of the animal kind of link to I've it. I think I've heard of it. So this is a Netflix exclusive and it's just kind of like dropped very recently. I would probably say in the last week or so. And it stars uh, Jeffrey Wright. You remember Jeffrey Wright? No. Okay. <laughs> what about Alexander Skarsgård? Yeah. He is Alexander Skarsgård. Is he the one in True Blood? The tall blonde guy? Or is he the one from Avengers? Dr. Selvig? 
Or he's Doct- the op- Dr. Selvig's son in real life. That's why, do you know what? That's why I always get them confused. You've got the same surname. Yes. So it's Dr. He's a younger guy. He's the one that played. Oh, he's the one that played. Oh, damn. I know him. I know, I know who you're talking about. He played, oh, he, he was played, he, Tarzan. He, he, wait, this guy. The, the, Alexander Skarsgård. Oh, that's his son in real life. Yes. Oh, that, him. Yeah. I know him. Yeah, he was in True Blood. Tall guy. Yeah. Blonde. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. he's Scandina- He's basically Scandinavian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then his brother is it. In real is life. Is that his brother? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. These scarred guards, These man. Guys, they, they're all over the place. Right. So this film that's called. I always get confused with that name. I always. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this film called uh, Hold the Dark. It stars okay. uh, Jeffrey Wright. You may have seen him in um, in Shaft. You might remember him from Shaft. So, oh yeah, yeah. He, he was in Bond as well. He in, was in uh, Bond. Quantum of Solace. That, that's it. So you may have seen him in that one, and and um, I, I think he's like, look, he's he's been around for a while. He's he's done other sorts of stuff, right? Mm. So, the film is set in Alaska, and what 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 are your thoughts on Alaska? What do you think about Alaska when you when I if I say Cold, you Alaska, dreary, remote, a place of high suicide rates, exactly. Uh, just, Desolate, lonely, isolated, remote. I said it already. Yeah. And you know what? You saying all those words just makes me think, but I do not want to go to this place. Well, listen, this film is set in Alaska and it is remote. It is desolate. It is cold. It's like all of those things that you just said right now. And what happens is the film starts off with a boy. He's playing in the snow and, you know, you think, oh, this is nice. Like, you know, he's playing in the snow and he's playing with his toys. And then you see a wolf. Okay, and then you don't see the boy anymore. So we are led to believe that the wolf has taken the boy. And then the story unfolds and the mother of the boy sends a letter out to Jeffrey Wright, who is an author who lives out in the city somewhere. And she says to him, hey, look, my son's been taken by a wolf. Please, can you come down and can you help me out? And I want you to capture this wolf. All right, because we we can't have this going on over here. So Jeffrey Wright, Jeffrey Wright's character, he you know he travels on a plane and he drives all this way over to to this woman's house. And I've got to say one thing: the cinematography is amazing in this. Serious. The the, the landscape, the kind of the coldness and the the aerial shots and you know th- there's one moment in the scene right at the beginning of the film where he's driving his car and there's a bison in the street a bison like from street fighter in bison <laughs> i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> there's a there's a there's an actual bison in the street and i tell you what right it's just like amazing the way this the way that they filmed it the way that they shot it the cinematographer on this on this film like you know should be given an award so you know what he arrives to the house and it's kind of creepy. It's kind of a bit mysterious. And, you know, he's looking around the house and he's like, so tell me about what happened. And she's like, yeah, like, you know, you know, his father's not here. His father's in Iraq. And the father of the, the missing boy is Alexander Sarsgaard. And, and you know, Jeffrey Wright's character turned around and said, well, have you told him? And he's like, no, I don't want to kind of mess with him because, you know, he's fighting out in, out in Iraq. So we just want to leave him over there for a bit. And imagine that. Like your son's gone missing. That's and mad. Come on now. He, and you know what? That's the mother mad. and the mother is not telling the dad. So Jeffrey Wright clearly has kind of got some. He, he's he's an agenda. Yeah, you know. Yeah, his ears are kind of like twitching up over here, and he's like, right, okay. So what happened? Where were you? And blah 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 blah. Something integral to the story is he looks around the house and he sees a mask. He sees a mask on the wall, and then the camera looks at it. And then that's it. We, we we have a cut away. But the fact that the camera lingered on that mask, we know that, okay, this is, is something connected to it, right? Okay. So I'm going to watch this film, by the way. So, okay. I'm please. not going to, I'm not going to give you, yeah, like, you know, I'm, whatever. I, this film, look, this film sounds good. Yeah. So I'm going to tiptoe around the whole thing. And so she, she says, look, please, can you go out and find my, 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 the wolf that killed my son? Because he's got experience and all that. So he goes away. He starts trekking. He starts like following the, the 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 tracking of of the wolves and everything, and he sees this pack of wolves, mm. and they are they're basically demolishing a um they they're eating something. So you see blood, something or someone, some oh well, my god, something, 
And he's like, right, okay. Right. You know what? They, they're eating something. I'm going to go back to the house because, you know what? Something's not right. Mm. Something's not right. So he goes back to the house and he meets this old woman. And she says to him, stay away from the lady. She's evil. And he's like, what? What do you mean? Like, you know what? Come and tell me. Did you know about this? The boy missing and stuff like that? She's like, listen, stay away from her. She's evil. Was it one of those old ladies on the rocking chair <laughs> that sit there and say, it, it there's could, a storm coming. It could have easily have been like that. It could have <laughs> easily have been someone like that, right? Okay, so he goes back into the house and he's like, look, I'm really sorry. Like, you know what? I didn't find uh, the wolf because the wolves, they hang around like, you know, in packs and mm. you know what? I, could, I didn't want to get too close to the den and everything like that, right? So fine. He goes to bed. Then that same night, he starts hearing noises. He starts hearing something and she's naked and she's wearing what? the mask. What? And she comes over to him. And what? yeah, it's just really, really weird. That's some freaky shit, man. Really freaky shit going on in the film. And some stuff are really mysterious. So you've got this kind of, uh, what, what would you call that? You would call it kind of something beyond... Um, beyond the afterlife okay there's something about the afterlife okay. going on in this scenario over here then all of a sudden from the cold and desolate and kind of like you know the the seclusion of alaska the film shifts to iraq what straight away it shifts to That's iraq two opposites completely two opposites and that is a theme in the film the opposites mm. the theme is you know, the one side, we've got the animal instinct in us and we've got the human instinct in us and which side comes out is up to you. Mm. And what do you do with that? Mm. Everyone has this animalistic instinct in us, right? And it kind of fits in with the film that you were, that you were kind of speaking about, The Wildling as well. So we, the film then shifts to Iraq and we see Alexander Sarsgaard uh, shooting shit up. He realises he gets word that his son's been killed and then he comes back to... Uh, Alaska mm. but things ain't right with Alexander Sarsgaard there's something really 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 wrong with him and this is evident because he goes on a killing spree oh my gosh All what, right? in, in Alaska in Alaska oh my gosh so then the film then becomes this idea about okay what is it uh, what is it what does it mean to be human and what is it does it mean to have those animal instincts what will you do or what lengths will you go to to kind of get revenge or you know um you know how, how are you how will you or, or where do you fit in this world mm. and i just thought the film is it kind of threw so many curveballs that you never knew exactly what was coming and then by the end of the film you're left with a story which i have to say is very very um uh unambiguous Okay. Oh. You are going to have to, the director has basically given you the, this film. You have to work out you what it means. You've got to piece it together. You've oh got to piece gosh. it together. Okay. So if you don't. It's a challenge. Yeah. If you don't want to do that, then um, you might think, oh gosh, shit. Do I really want to like watch a film? It's only an hour and a half. So the okay. film's only an hour and a half. So it's not like a kind of like a long, long film, but it will keep you going. There's so many good performances in there. Mm. And it, whilst I was watching, I was like, shit, right, what's going to happen? Like, who, who are these people? Like, why are they doing this? And, you know, what is this link with the wolves and everything? And what's the mask? And this looks creepy. And why did that old lady say that she's like, you know, evil? And mm. by the end of the story, you're going to be like, oh, right. So that happened in the film. That led to that. That led to this. And then you're going to start after making your own like conclusions. But I'd say go and watch it. It's got some good stuff in there. Jeffrey Wright is kind of, um, you know, he underplays, he underplays, you know, there's a kind of like an underplayed performance in there. There's a cracking, cracking action scene in the film where you're like, where the hell is this film going? Why have they put this in this movie? But there's a real deep message. Okay. A real deep message. Oof. So watch it if you, if you don't want things written, you know, on a plate for you. Okay if you kind of like have to dig around a bit and if you're still thinking right, where the hell is this movie, then we'll speak about it on, okay. next, on next week's episode and stuff. You know, I was going to watch this, you know, yeah. when I was choosing my film for the week, I was, it was between this and the wildling. Okay. And I only chose the wildling because I saw that first a few days before. Yeah. So I thought, okay, first come first served. So, but 
Hold the Dark hold did the, grab my attention. Yeah, watch Hold the Dark and then I'll watch Wild Link. Okay, cool. And we'll, we'll okay. do that and we'll speak about cool. it next week, all right? How many lighters would you give it? All oh, right, how many? I would... <sighs> I'd give it like, you know, a good, I'd give it like, you know, six and a half, seven. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. You know, there, there, there's, mm. there's so many interesting things in there, but like I said before, it's, it's a, it's a thought provoking film. That's good. So it's not, it has got this big action set piece, but it's not mm. an action film. Okay. It's got some mysterious stuff, but it's not kind of like a horror film mm. or like, you know, a, a scary type of a movie, okay. but there's loads of themes in there. So mm. definitely. And I just think, um, you know, it's, it's great that we see these types of films. Mm, okay so go check it out ladies and gents uh, watch that one it's called Hold the Dark and now let's move on to Hidden Gems mm, Hidden Gems so yeah so uh, the gem garden tell us about your gem yeah, garden so a few gems I've had to look far and wide because mm. uh, we've been giving away hidden gems so frequently <laughs> over the weeks so I've had to really look in the corners of my gem garden just to see <laughs> which gems are there that I you know haven't gazed my eye upon yeah so uh I came upon I Spit on Your Grave. Yeah. Have you heard of it? I have. Th- and this was made in the... Th- th- I know this is, this this is, is a yeah, remake. It's original. Yeah. Th- th- 1978, I believe, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, I think it was banned in many countries. The, uh, part of the Video Nasties yeah, campaign. Yeah, exactly. So it's a remake of a 1970s classic. Uh, there's actually three of these films. I Spit in Your Grave 1, 2010. I Spit in Your Grave again. <laughs> <laughs> in 2000 and uh i think it's 13 and then uh i'm still spitting on your grave <laughs> here's a cloth <laughs> in 2015 i believe uh <laughs> it's either that or two years apart so maybe it's 2010 2012 2014 but yeah so basically i, sp- I spit in your grave is a story about uh, a young lady who's out in the sort of cabin sort of part of america uh, I'm not sure what state it is, but it's one of those sort of wood, woodland kind of cabiny places, I don't know, Montana or somewhere, I don't know. And uh, she is literally uh, violently uh, assaulted, sexually assaulted, gang raped mm. by these hillbilly like dickheads, basically. Yeah, yeah. And it's so, so, so like brutal and so, it's like they're so bad with it. They just have so so much so little disregard for life and yeah. and her they literally take turns and there's one person in the group who has learning difficulty right and they he's reluctant he doesn't want to do it but they forced him like, to put peer, peer pressure on him to to get involved you know and it's just it's crazy I and mean, that's the that's the sort of setup of the film and they leave her for dead yeah basically but like the fighter she is she doesn't die and she takes her time to come back at these guys yes. in the most horrible, rawest, yeah. like revengeful way. And it's like, it's the only time you really condone someone like, you know, hunting people down and yeah. taking care of them. Yeah. But she, she comes after these guys, man. And it's she, crazy. Yeah. She clocks them off. She has a part one. She does that and just takes care of them. Oh, is it the same actress from in part two and three? Yeah. She's in part two. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll, gle- I'll glean over part two, but in part two, uh, she's back in. She's back in. I think New York, right? Because in the first one, she's out in like Montana or somewhere woodlandy, you know, yeah. log fires and cabins and whatever. In the in the second one, she's in New York, and something similar happens to her in New York. It's like oh, flip it how now. can someone have such bad luck? <laughs> but she goes for like a modeling. Uh, agency type job to take photos because obviously what she's gone through she's lost all her confidence right yeah and her friend her friend convinces her oh go for this take some photos it'd be great you know get your confidence back it's just a few, it's just, just a few photos yeah and she does it but the person that takes the photos is a sadistic person and right wants to try and rape her oh yeah she gets she gets held in this one in some like underground den because there's, there's an organization that like get people yeah and like lock people up and sort of you know like uh, modern slavery type things it's crazy yeah and uh, the story just unfolds and unfolds and there's a part three as well and she's just like the bad I I thought Taken was bad (laughs) but this is worse (laughs) I thought I could get three films out of that but this film here man she's got the worst luck yeah but it's a good film yeah and the the title I Spit spit on on Your your grave, Grave it just denotes that you know someone's done something so bad to you that 
I'm I'm willing to spit on your grave. Exactly. You know? So because that like, grave is supposed to be like a sacred you're, place. You're resting. Yeah, place. exactly. But someone to spit, someone spits on your grave. It means that you've done something so bad to them that they want they want more bad things to happen, happen to you. Happen to you. Yeah. So I spit on your grave. Yeah, it's a good okay. film. 2011, it first came out. And just one thing: is there a scene in the film where she does she bite? Does she bite um, someone's dick off? Yeah. I think there is, you know. Okay. I think there might be a scene like that. Because yeah. that was the thing from the original one. That got, okay. It was, it was part of this whole Video Nasties mm. uh, campaign here in, in, in England in the 80s. And that rape scene in the original mm. one, that's why it was banned. Okay. So it was like, you know, you couldn't even kind of like, you know, watch it. Yeah. And I remember it was like huge, huge, huge. And so, yeah, I just wanted mm. to find out. Forget someone's knob gets chopped off. Oh my gosh! All right, okay. So that was I spit on your grave, and tell us about gin. Gin, yeah. So gin, uh, two thousand fourteen. Uh, gin is, and one of the reasons I, put, I chose it. Gin, it's not. I wouldn't say it's your. It's not one of my best, uh, like hidden gems. It's worth a watch. Don't get me wrong. All mm. my hidden gems are worth a watch. But gin is interesting because uh, for, for those that don't know, gins are. Like uh, in the sort of Islamic world, jinns are like spirits or they could be angels, but it could be demons as well. Yeah. And uh, in most in most times people talk about them, they're more talking about the sort of demons, spirits that, you know, are, that mean bad, that are, you know, bad spirits basically. Yeah. And uh, this film, uh, one, of the reasons that, one of the reasons I picked it is because it actually stars... <laughs> Don't tell me, is it, it's not Freddy Krueger? No, 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 oh, no, no, okay. no, 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 but it's got, uh, it's got Darth Maul in it. <laughs> so Does he play a djinn? No, no, he doesn't. Okay. He plays a uh, Angel Gabriel, actually. Oh. So yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a good version of a djinn, if you want to say that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Ray Park, who plays Darth Maul, has, he, he's in the film as no makeup and he's got lots of dialogue. Oh, so wow. So if, if you want to see Darth Maul in a film where he's got dialogue and he's like, you know, looking like his normal self, you go ahead and watch the gym. Watch he's normal, he's yeah. quite good in it. Yeah. Obviously he gets a few kicks in there, isn't it? You know, cause yeah, he's, he's a martial artist in real life. Yeah. He's actually, he actually grew up down the road from here. Hendon He's a local lad. Shout out to, to Hendon. Shout out to Hendon, NW9. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so he's in the film as, as, as Angel Gabriel. Uh, also the actor who played the baddie in Iron Man 1, you know, like the kind of Arab kind of guy, like the, uh, I can't remember, his, his name Tariq. is uh, uh, Faran oh. Tahir in real life. But okay, yeah. I can't remember what his name was in, in Iron Man, but you yeah. know, he like kind of like the, the, is like the Islamic kind yeah. of terrorist yeah, kind yeah, of baddie. Yeah. He's in the film as well. Oh, okay. He's not a jindo. He's like a, a mental patient who right. has had previous dealings with the gym. Uh, he tries to warn the main character. And who's the main character? Uh, Dominic Reigns. I've not seen him in uh, many other things, but he's a, he's a, He's an actor. <laughs> <laughs> He's an actor. Uh, so yeah, so he try, he tries to warn him about gins and things like that because Dominic starts to realize weird things happening in his life. Yeah, like his his his, his the father was his parents were both killed like s- suspiciously. Yeah, bad things seem to follow him around, and it seems like there's a gin attached to his his life. Oh, so he so he once he becomes aware of it. He tries to seek help. He goes to a priest. Angel Gabriel comes involved. They all try to help him. And then he realizes, okay, he's in the shit house now. He's got yeah. to try and fight this gin that's trying to attach itself to his spirit and his 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 girlfriend as well. And this just this gin appears as like a, like a quite a mystical figure. Uh quite a like a magical type figure. It can give you, it can make you seem like you're getting all the blessings, but really it wants your soul. soul. Yeah. So the films, it's, it's an interesting film with some good action set pieces and some quite spiritual moments and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I think the director has come, comes from Ter- Tehran right. and the, the lead actor, I think also is from Tehran or born in Tehran. So yeah. it's got, you know, the roots of maybe where Jin's origins are from and stuff like that is embedded into the film from, yeah. a, I guess, uh, the, the, the filmmakers, you know, personal life and so on in, but yeah go on I was gonna say yeah but it's, it's interesting uh, a relatively well made uh, low budget I'll just say uh, action sort of horror type thriller film and 
bottom line is it's got Ray Park. Yeah. Bob's your uncle, mate. But exactly. Mm. Darth, it, Darth Maul. It, it's so funny because when you mentioned gin, I was like, oh my God, I, I've seen a film where it's got like a gin in there. I'm not sure if you remember this film from the 90s. It's called Wishmaster. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Wishmaster. Yeah. He plays a gin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was it was just, Wishmaster 1, 2 and 3, I think. God, yeah. Yeah, played loads. And then, um, so that's why I said Robert England because he's in it. Mm, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, but okay. Yeah, this is interesting because um, they've they, they, what it sounds like is if they're weaving in the kind of the the mysticism into yeah. it as well and the kind of the re- religious aspect of it. Exactly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go check out uh, Jin. Mm. J I N N. Uh, yes. For guys that don't know. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, so here's a film that I wanted to mention, and it it kind of you know uh, similar to kind of what we've spoken about before Mm. in Hold the Dark and what you mentioned about Wildling as well I figured that when I saw it I was like okay he's getting kind of wolfy here I am getting a bit wolfy over here and I've chosen this film because um, I when I first saw it I hadn't heard anything about it it went under the radar I saw it years like maybe a couple years afterwards and loads of people were talking about this movie like Mm. you know it stars Liam Neeson it's got Frank uh, Grillo in it um, oh, okay, crossbones. Crossbones in it. Has it got Punisher? Is he in it? No, he's not. I don't think so. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if uh, Punisher's in it, but mm. um, it's a film called The Grey. Mm. And the setup is, you know, Liam Neeson's character, he works on kind of like this oil rig and he's, you know what? It's probably Alaska again. Yeah, so yeah. cold, desolate. And, you know, he's going through some troubles. You can, through flashbacks, we realise that his wife's died of cancer or something. So he hasn't really got anything to live for. And, you know, he's tough, he's gruff. And, you know, he's kind of like, you you could say, you know, he's like a man's man where, you know, he's not afraid of like um, getting his hands dirty. So they're on this big job. They've got to take an aeroplane the weather is really, really shit mm. and the plane goes down. There's oh, wow. loads of people die. There's some survivors and then it, then it becomes a film of basically survival. Yeah. So they've got a kind of like, you know, stick together and they have to try and weather the storm, the cold weather, they've got to stay warm, but also they have to try and stay safe from a growing pack of wolves. Mm. And... I just thought when I first saw this film, I thought it was riveting. I thought it was kind of, um, you know, one of those films where you think, just what would you do in that situation? You know, it's man against nature, man against beast. Mm. (laughs) Do you have to become a beast to overcome the beast? Mm. That's what I thought. The beast won't be able to become man to to overcome man, will it? No. Mm. So it then, you know, and... And funny enough, well, not funny enough, but this film was criticised a lot because it shows what when you you know uh, you've seen this film, right? Yeah. When 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 you saw this film, what did you think about wolves after you watched it? Mm, I guess it depicts them as like you know predators and baddies and stuff, but they're just in their natural habit, in their natural habitat. That's what uh, I reckon. And that's what the criticism was. Mm. Basically, the film shows, and I want to speak about this because. Uh, you know, people go out and hunt wolves because they think, oh my God, like, you know, we're going to get attacked and, you know, we're, you know, we're going to do this. Mm. And that. But apparently wolves are very, very like shy, shy animals. They will only attack mm. w- like in certain situations. And they feel provoked probably. Isn't provoked it? when they're hungry yeah. and like, you know. Or newborn. If there's newborns around, they're going to protect them. Exactly. And so, you know, you could think, well, okay, why aren't they showing wolves in that light? But again, this isn't that type of a film. This is a film like about survival. What Mm. would you do in that situation and how would you overcome it? Uh, I think visually it's stunning. It's Mm. like, you know, set in kind of like an Alaska type of a place. Liam Neeson's great in it. And then he's kind of had this kind of career, right? As this action, this older action type of a hero. But I think out of all of the Taken films and the commuter ones, this is probably the high point, mm. like, you know, the gray, um, it's funny in places, you know, I remember the scene where they, they're at a fire, they light a fire and they're all taking the piss out of each other. And then they see this massive wolf in the background and they're like, we're going to get eaten alive over here, man. This is like, you know, one of those mm. things almost akin to the bit in Jaws. Do you remember when he's putting the chomp oh, in the water? Yeah. It comes out of the blue yeah. and he goes, we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. 
it's almost like that where it's like shit we're gonna need like something yeah. major to try and kill these animals and then in the end like you know you know you can kind of guess where it's going to end up between one wolf and one man but who wins who survives you'll have to wait until the end credit scenes mm, yeah this film goes right to the end doesn't it right I liked to the it, end actually yeah i liked it so ladies and gentlemen if you haven't seen it go check it out it's got liam neeson who who i think is like great and it's not your typical liam neeson film there's mm. no one missing <laughs> there's no one that he has to save there's no trains involved it's just him mm. surviving uh, against nature against like you know um wildlife wildlife mm. who wins go go check it out and go find out and i thought it kind of you can maybe watch it as a double bill with mm. hold the dark mm, true or a triple with with, with wildling with as well wildling see what mm-hmm. we did there flicksters i heard that all right so Deval, that brings the show mm. to an end great end good good uh review there so uh yeah good job thank you in your uh texan accent can you do it <laughs> no <laughs> syrup that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> oh is that a syrup is that an inside like, like <laughs> is that an inside joke between an you and joke, oh, yeah. okay all right but thanks guys uh as usual uh do hit us up on our, our social media pages, uh, comment on the show, tell us any films you want us to review. And uh, like I say, every week, if you comment, review and uh, put in the comment, number 19, we will reward you with a cinema code for a view cinema and, or so a view cinema or a Cineworld cinema code. So you can watch a film of your choice, but you gotta be in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> And just finally, I just got to do one thing. Oh, yeah. No, 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 19. 19. No, 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 19. What did I say? No. Do you, you know you know that song? No, I don't. <laughs> what's, what's Paul Hardcastle, 19. No. Oh, devout. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, like, all right, we'll, we'll end the show there. Peace out. Take it easy.